Hello, everybody, and happy to Wednesday. We hope everybody's having a very good week. You made it to the halfway point, which means you made it here to Fantastic Finds with us two cheery people, the one, the only Amy of Enamor Amy and Jason of Mother Tuckers. We hope you're doing well. And how are you doing, Amy? Are you doing well? I'm good. I am good. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I wish that like yesterday was officially the first day of spring. Right. The the spring equinox, if you will. Right. Um, but it is 20 degrees here. It doesn't yeah. feel like spring. I wish it did. Really yeah. Did. The talk of the town here in Pennsylvania is the same thing. It's been like, okay, over the weekend we hit 70. It was still winter. Now we officially passed the uh, check mark of spring. And now Mother Nature has decided to make it cold and windy. And yeah, I we're heard. supposed to get like two inches of snow on Friday. So. That's what I heard. I was just going to say some places I hear they're I talking. I wish Mother Nature would make up her mind. Mother Nature doesn't know what it wants to do. I, so. I know. It doesn't know. And as soon as it does, and here in Pennsylvania, it's like, if you don't like the weather, just wait 20 minutes because the sun's either going to come out or the uh -huh. sun's going to go away. Uh -huh. It's going to get windy or one of those things. So, well, guys, thank you for joining us. We are so honored that you guys are here with us. As always, our official mod and bit ender is the one and the only Karen G. Thank you so much, Karen. Our backup mod and bit ender is the very lovely Kim, also known as Desert Gal. Thank you, ladies, so much. We have other mods that will be popping in throughout the night, but those are our two main ones for the evening, and we thank you so much. So as we get ready to say hello to some of our friends, don't forget to stick around after the sale. We're going to do our you know, community share your fantastic finds, and they are really, really good. So as folks are coming in, we're the two folks that we're spotlighting tonight is Kim Ann. So Kim Ann, and then we also have Sally B. So those, mm, I okay. previewed them. These photos are, they're really good. So y'all want to stick around. So, um, and also, um, as we scroll up here, man, I lost my words are hard for Jason tonight. They're very hard, hard today. I agree. <laughs> they are very hard. So um, I want to thank Amy. That's what it was. I want to thank Amy for making our wallpaper and our thumbnail. I always want to thank you for all the hard work you do. That's not as easy as some folks would think it is. So um, I always appreciate you. We all appreciate you. You do such a good job. And I want to thank Tina, who what she'll do is she'll crop pictures and she'll make little collages. She'll enter them too. So always, Tina, thank you. Uh, for doing that. So let's get our hellos in. We want to say hello to all our friends joining us. The first one in the chat is Terry. How are you, Terry? It's so good to see you here tonight. Followed by Rose. How are you, Rose? We are so happy to see you. There's our friend William. How are you, William? And William, remember, we got to keep it under wraps. The secret coming up for the Valentinos. That's a little secret in between all of us. Does that so, mean I can't tell either? You got to just... Just give me a couple more days of keeping it under wraps, please. And Bill had told me after sale, he goes, oh, I already leaked it to William. And that's okay. William, you got the inside track, my friend. So, but we just got to keep it on the down low. Keep on the down low. Hello, Shannon. So good to see you. Hopefully you are doing well. I'm making a big deal out of nearly nothing, but hey, whatever. Here Wait, this is this next, next Friday? It'll be next Sunday. It'll be good, good Friday. Friday. Good It'll be Friday. good Friday. We are going to put the craziest spin on Good Friday that you have ever had done to you. That's all I can say. That's all I can say to you. All I can say to you. So speaking of our official mod and bit ender, there is the one, the only Karen G. Please familiarize yourself with her avatar. Again, she will be the one closing out all the auctions tonight with a bit end. I have a feeling that Gavin is at work tonight. So if you could, please, Karen, put his links in there. I'm going to just do it right now. And if he comes in, we'll do it again. It's my man, Gavin of Grady Grupo Vintage Recordings. Guys, he has a really fun YouTube channel here, and it is a really unique channel in the essence that he mixes a lot of things together that folks don't. So he plays music, it's on vinyl, it's on a turntable, and they mix in vintage. So please give Gavin a follow. Let's show some support to our community here on YouTube. Give them a follow. You will not be sorry. It's our man, Gavin. How are you, Cindy Lou? It's so good to see you. Hopefully you are doing well here tonight. Let's see who else here is in the chat as we scroll down. I see a couple of duplicate names. We're scrolling. My chat's acting weird already. There she is. How are you, Mama Pam? So good to see you. Hopefully you are doing well. We have Bug here in the chat. How are you? Hello. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I cannot believe that we are in the back half of March now. Can you believe that? I, 
I know. One of these days, I'm going to make it to this shop. Our friend Brad Cleveland is in the chat. After my own heart, I watched both videos, not only Amy's videos, but I also saw uh, Misty's video. And I'm telling you, it's a really, really fun shop. Amy, where, what's the name of their shop and where is it at again? It's Countryside Antique yep. Mall in Thornton, Indiana, which is off of 52, um, which is northwest of Indianapolis. So. Okay. I'm yeah. telling y'all. You got to go. Yeah, I can't. I'm counting down the days because I don't get to go again until the end of April. So. Okay. All right. It looks like a fun store. And if I ever get within hours, a few hours, I will be there. Hopefully I'm there with Amy someday. We hope we can hang out with Mama Pam and her and go shop. So great shop, fellas. How are you, Liz? It's so good to see you. And Liz, I need confirmation if you enjoyed the Italian restaurant that I sent you to. I'm hoping that you did because I didn't hear anything bad. But let me know via DM how you liked it. I'm curious to, to know. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We saw Liz on Sunday, Amy, and I'm not a good YouTuber, Instagrammer. I never took a photo. She left and like an hour went by and I looked at Tina and I was like, dang it. I, a photo with Liz. I, so I have done that. I have done that before, too. And Liz and her husband are such nice people. So next time you're in town, we're going to get two pictures. And maybe to make up for it, Liz, maybe we'll go to the Italian restaurant with you. I don't know. Just putting it out there. So there's my mom, Linda. So good to see you. I love you, mom. Dusty Moose, good to see you. Hopefully you are doing well. Boy, I will tell you guys, speaking of sales, Ariana sales, she had some really fun stuff last night. I'm telling you. Yeah, right? I know. I bought something. Then I should I know. Have. I know. Congratulations. Those, I can't wait to see what you do with those ducks. Are you going to craft with them or are you keeping them? I don't know. Okay. I just knew that they needed to be, they needed to be in my life. I don't yeah, know they're yet. Good. They're don't good. Know. They're good. I can't wait to see what you do with them. I might have to bid on them if you, or wherever you offer to sell them because of that. They're good. They're good. Hello, Laura. It's so good to see you. Hello, Karen Kennedy. It's always a pleasure. Good to see you. How are you? Hopefully you're doing well. How are you, Linda? Welcome in, everybody. I will move along with the hellos. There's our backup mod and bid ender, Kim. Kim, please put your links in. Kim is not only one of our mods, but she is a reseller. So please, please follow her. Any of the links she puts up there, please, please do. Hello there, Jewelry by Denise. It's so good to see you. Hopefully you are doing well. Welcome in, everyone. Welcome to Fantastic Finds. Hello, Elizabeth. Good to see you. Hello, we're now. We are definitely spanning the globe right now at this point. It's very fun, the fact that we can do this and reach as many people as we do. It still blows my mind. How are you, Dawn? It is so good to see you. Hopefully you're doing well. Happy Wednesday, everybody. There's Tina, the other half of Mother Tucker. So good to see you, Tina. There is Sandy here in the chat. Welcome, Sandy. Happy hump day. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Metal girl, so good to see you. I was getting worried. I haven't seen you for a little bit, so... Hopefully you're doing well and happy Wednesday all the way from New York, all the way from New York state. Let's see who else is in here with us. Hello, Lisa. Good to see you. There is John of everyday holiday displays. One of the Valentinos. If y'all aren't following him over on Instagram, please, please do yourself the favor. I'm actually going to be that person. Do yourself the favor. Follow that man. He'll give you ideas on how to do your display. So if you ever stumble and you need an idea, he's your man. <clears throat> I got I to gotta warm up the tongue. It's cold in Pennsylvania now. How are you, Debbie Gutierrez? Ooh, that was good. I like that. I don't even think you really have to try to say it anymore. I don't, but I enjoy the act of feeling like... <laughs> don't steal that from me, Amy. I like I doing... <laughs> I don't get to say it anymore unless you win something from me. Oh, how are you, Debbie? It's so good to see you. Hopefully Texas is doing well. There's a little buttermilk and cream, two of my favorite things. How are you? So good to see you. Let's see who else is down here. I am trying to move as fast as I can, guys. Hello, Peppermint Patty. So good to see you. Another one of my favorite things. So good, Peppermint Patties. There's Mary Beth. Good to see you tonight. Happy Wednesday, everybody. We hope you're doing well. We hope you're ready to see some fantastic finds, whether them be from what folks sent in or what we have tonight. There's Spark Joy in Life. Good to see you. Checking in for all the way from New York, where Lady Liberty is, the one the only Noel. Good to see you. And we're down here at the bottom. So again, guys, hello, Noel. So if you are not subscribed to Enamor Amy's channel by chance and you're watching this in a replay, please go right down below. We made it real easy. Her link is in the description for not only here on YouTube. We got to get her to 4,000. She's so close to the 4,000. We got there. 
you're, you're yeah. chugging, yeah. you're chugging the 4,000. So we got to get her to 4,000. And if you're not subscribed to Mother Tuckers, please do so. I just want to say hello to Tracy real quick. Hello, Tracy. Hello, glowy girl. It's so good to see you. So please subscribe to both of us. We'd greatly appreciate it. I'll turn it over to my co-host, the one, the only Amy. She's going to explain to us how it's going to work. And then we're going to jump into it. We'll get the sale. Yeah, we, are. we have a lot of goodies to get to tonight. So without further ado, most of you have heard this hundreds of times, but in case we have somebody in the Lurker's Lounge enjoying a cocktail um, and some snacks tonight that has not been to a live sale um, or it's your first time here, welcome you guys. This is Fantastic Finds. This happens every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern here on Mother Tucker's. Um, so we do our live sale and then we do our community share following our sale. Um, so stick around for that. So we're going to try and move the sale as quickly as we, we can so we're not here till midnight, um, even though some of you would like a midnight sale. I know you would. Um, maybe sometime we, we could do a midnight madness. I think that would be kind of fun. Um, but um, we're going to move through the sale quickly. We do have 16 rounds of goodies to bring you guys tonight. So most of our items tonight will be the offer up or the auction style. Um, so very important before we start the sale, you guys want to check your chat settings, make sure you're in live chat, all messages and not top chat. If you're in top chat, it's going to filter out some of the comments for you. You might miss a bid. You might miss a hello from a fellow chatter, something like that. So always make sure you're in live chat, all messages. And if you do plan on bidding, we recommend you do so on a mobile device. So either a phone or a tablet are going to be a faster option for you versus the computer. Uh, the computer, for whatever, whatever reason, is just a hair slower than a mobile device. Um, but to combat the lag that we always seem to experience here on YouTube, I wish it would just go away be lovely. Uh, we could have uh, the sale in real time. <laughs> that would be so nice. But unfortunately, we have a lag. So uh, to combat that lag, you don't even have to leave the sale at all. Um, up in the upper corner here, if you tap the screen, there's a little gear wheel icon. If you tap on that, you can hit playback speed and 2x. So two times the speed if you're lagging behind at all. We will talk funny for a moment until you get caught up. Um, and that is a, a way that you can fix the lag if you're lagging behind at all uh, multiple times throughout the sale. We do recommend checking in on that. If you are watching on the computer, um, down here is where the gear, gear wheel icon is located for the computer screen. Same kind of deal for playback speed. And there's also a red line. I, I forget to mention this sometimes, but there's a red line that's underneath the screen as well. Um, you always want to make sure that that's all the way far what, right as far as you can go. That'll make sure you guys are in the most current point that you can be in the broadcast. All right. So for the offer ups, we'll show you the item. We'll give you a starting price. Jason will pin it up here on the screen. If you're interested in bidding on the item, all you have to do is type your bids down in to the chat in whole dollar amounts. We will describe the item to you. We'll note any issues as we're going along, but do keep in mind vintage and antique items that we're showing tonight have had a life. We do our best to show any kind of issues to you live here on screen so that you can make an informed decision if you decide to bid, okay? So we will show the item. We'll do a countdown, and then the highest bid that we see before the official bid end of the lovely Karen Gillette will be the winner. We also do something here on Mother Tucker's called Just In Case, if you're not familiar with that. So um, what Just In Case is, is the max amount that you're willing to bid for the item. Okay, so uh, in order to utilize the Just In Case, we just ask that you are an active bidder. So what an active bidder is, is that you've put at least one straight bid in on the current item before you can utilize the Just In Case during the countdown. So during the countdown, if you put in one bid already, you're welcome to utilize the just in case. So that is the max amount you're willing to pay with the letters JIC next to it. That is your just in case bid. And if your just in case is the highest before the bid end, we'll bid you up $1 over the next highest amount. But do keep in mind, if there is more than one just in case put into the chat, those will turn into regular bids. Okay, so don't go too crazy with those just in cases. You might just have to, yeah, yeah, just be careful with those. All right, so if you're not familiar, you don't know how it works, um, it's just you can kind of see how it works throughout the sale um, because a lot of people do like to use it. But if you don't want to use it, that's fine. You don't have to. All right, um, and if you win an item tonight, we do need some information from you. Um, so 
we just ask if you win an item that you send us an email with your YouTube screen name, your real name, your full shipping address, and an email that we can send your PayPal invoice to. And if you don't have PayPal, that is okay. Send us an email with all of that same information. Let us know that you don't have PayPal that you'd like to check out as a guest. That way, when we send our invoices out, we can email you a direct link to your invoice, and then you can check out with any debit, credit, Venmo, or PayPal. Okay, super easy. Our emails are up here on the screen right now. You're welcome to take a screenshot if you want to reference that later. Jason's also pinned it in a comment up at the top of the chat. Um, also down in the description of the video if you need to come back and find it later. And our awesome mod squad does a lovely job at putting them into the chat throughout the sale as well. So it's pretty easy to find that information. If you haven't bought from us for a while or you've just bought from us last week, we certainly don't mind the extra email. It's just so much easier to find the information at the top of our email and not have to hunt and peck for it um, while we're sending out our invoices, okay? So do make sure if you're a new buyer to send that information either during the sale or as soon as it's over because otherwise we can't find you. We cannot go on YouTube and type in your screen name and then you pop up. That's yeah. not how it works. So you got to email us your info. All right. And um, as far as shipping goes, I ship from Michigan. Um, both Jason and I utilize PayPal and Pirate Ship. So we get the discount uh, rates on shipping that we pass along to you guys as opposed to the retail rates at the post office. Um, so there's quite a bit of discount there that we can pass the savings on to you guys. And I only ship to US and Canada at this current time. Um, tomorrow night on my channel, I do have a sale 8 p.m. Eastern with Fatbird Finds. So I will combine ship this week. So if you guys purchase from me tonight and you come to the sale and you get something tomorrow, as long as they're safe to pack together, I'm welcome to uh, combine ship for you guys. So I'll be doing my invoicing on Friday this week, but keep in mind, I have a lot of Easter stuff tonight. Um, I have a couple Easter things tomorrow. Um, so I, I'm really trying to get everything shipped out by Saturday morning, just so that it has enough time to get to you guys. Um, so invoice Friday, I'm really trying to ship everything out Saturday morning. So keep that in mind for any Easter purchases. And that's it for me. Thank you. All right. I ship out of Pennsylvania. And if you guys purchased from me on Monday night sale during Marvelous Mother Tucker's Monday with Bill, Garden Guy Bill, please give him a follow if you're not subscribed. But if you purchased over on Monday sale, you have an open box, which means if you purchase tonight and I can combine it for you safely, because that's the key. If I can combine it for you safely, usually I can. We will get it all put together to get you guys even cheaper uh, shipping. So you can kind of put it all in there. I also offer free pickup at my brick and mortar. We own a shop, Mother Tucker's Antiques. It's in central Pennsylvania. Uh, please just send me an email. Uh, we will just invoice you for the item. Once that's paid for, then we'll communicate via email on when you want to uh, pick it up. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, I want to say hello to some other folks that jumped in. Amy covered everything else for me when it came to the shipping aspect. So we want to say hello to him. He's in full effect. It's our man, Gavin. He's our YouTube DJ. Hello. Checking in, sir. Good to see you. We have Jennifer. How are you, Junebug? Give her a follow over on Instagram and over on Whatnot. Hello, Trina. So good to see you. And I think I saw Leslie up here, a collector. Hold on here. I know it's coming up here somewhere. Collector at heart. I saw it somewhere, but I don't see it now to highlight. But hello. I hope you're doing well. And welcome in, everybody. Like Amy said, we have 16 rounds tonight. So we are going to get the sale moving. Then stick around if you're just joining us. Hello, KBEE. -E. It's so good to see you, friend. Good to see you here tonight. Stick around for afterwards. There she is. Hello. There you are. How are you, Collector? I knew I saw you in here. Hello. It's good to see you. Stick around because we have the very lovely Kimry Ann's fantastic finds. And you want to got you guys got to see some of Sally B's items. So they're very good. Hello, Soul Nate. So good mm -hmm. to see you. Gang, make sure you're following him and make sure you follow Katie Vintage and Vinyl. They do incredible jewelry sales. So do yourself a favor and follow. You guys are going to be back. The Saturday, right? I think they will be. They were going to move it to this week, but I didn't see anything. Yeah. So I think that it'll, and usually they do a good job, gang, of promoting that about a day or two out. So uh, just keep an eye out for that. They're two great people to follow. So we're going to do something different tonight since we're in spring now. We're going to have Amy go first and then <laughs> and I will follow. 
<laughs> All right. Um, $12, Jason. Okay. Okay. So these were, mom and I went out on Saturday last weekend and I really tried my darndest not to buy any more Easter, but it was good Easter and I couldn't say no. So this, this was something that I picked up over the weekend. So I have some German die cut um, sheets of Easter bunnies and little chicks and chickens. Um, and I believe these are from the eighties. Um, the uh, marking on here is printed in Germany and EAS. So I'm not sure if I may be able to. Um, so they're numbered there in, in the center. None of these are cut. Um, they're all still attached. There it is. Um, EAS stands for EA um, Schweiderferger. Um, and that company did the die cut little pieces um, from 1880 to 1980. I do believe this is a 1980 version. I don't think it's much older than that. Um, I, I have had some of the older ones and they just have a different texture. Um, but it's totally uncut. You can see it is quite large um sheet there now i will say that the um the bigger bunny ones um all measure three inches um i didn't measure the little individual chicks or anything but most of the larger ones measure three inches so there's lots of crafty possibilities you could do with these or i think that that would look really cool framed mm -hmm. as well um how i found it was folded in half like this and that's probably how i will ship it um, I don't really want to cut any of the tabs unless you tell me otherwise. That is probably um, how I'm going to send it flat, just like that, just how I found it. So um, the sheets measure 13 by 5. 13 by 5 um, is the total sheet, like, folded out, okay? So that's the size there. But each of the, like, bigger bunnies, so that is a, a big one, the chicks on the eggs, um, they're all around three inches. Okay. But then there's little individual bunnies and chicks that you can cut up too. Amy, is that one bunny wearing like a blue, like, like button shirt with like a newspaper? Like he's heading out to oh, like. Oh, he's got a sheet music. Okay. All right. Oh my he's gosh. He's got a little music uh, note there and gotcha. he has kind of like a um, polka dot shirt on. And then it. the one that's upside down, I guess I'll turn it around, um, playing the guitar. Got it. Got it. Then there's uh, chickens. It's hard to know what orientation. I've got a little, a mama chicken in her basket and all the little chicks running around. Really, really cute. I love these. I just don't yeah. see them yeah. hardly ever. So when I find them in good shape and nothing's been cut apart, I, I like to pick them up. So um, I see roses in at 13. Thank you so much. So we're looking for 14 or more. I am going to count these down. Um, I don't really know how bad the lag is. So I think we'll just roll with 20 second countdowns um, tonight and see how it goes. Because I know Monday you guys had a weird lag. Tuesday, yeah. Missy and Michael had a weird lag. So yeah. we'll just go with 20 seconds. All right. We're looking for 14 or more on the sheet. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, bid it. Possibilities with these, Amy, are, are limitless. Like decoupage, junk channeling, yeah. frame, them, them in, whatever you want to do. Can put them in flower frogs, make a little scene, oh, yeah. like yeah. tons of things. All right. There's the bunny and chick bit end from Karen. Thank you so much. So Rose had a just in case of 15, but Miss Gutierrez had a just in case of 25. So for 16, Debbie, these are coming to you. Thank you so much. You always say her name so much better than I do, Amy. No, I don't. So much better. It's all right. All right, guys. Ten dollars choice. And these are Easter style. You can keep them out all year long, all year long, but they're Easter style. So it's going to be choice. It's going to be choice on sets. Okay. These are these cute little, now these are bisque and I believe these are probably 1980s. So this will be your first choice. These little chicks. Okay. And they're reading true to color. You have this one that is showing some major side eye that is popping out of an egg and they're about three inches tall. So there is remnants of stickers on the bottom. I believe the stickers probably would have said they were made in Taiwan. So this is your first little one that's going to come in the first group. You can see there's no chips, no cracks. They are bisque and they are these little teeny tiny 
little chicks. So there's that one popping out of the egg. And then you're going to get what I think is the mama chick. So I think that was the mama chick. And then you had the baby chick popping out. So you'll get this one with it as well. And you can see she has a green little bonnet on. She has like a lavender pink style apron and little bow. So $10, that is your first choice. Second choice, I found one bunny and then hello, Patty. Good to see you. I found one bunny and then I found another. So they're not from like the same series, but he needed a friend. So this large guy measures three and a half inches tall. And again, I believe that these, these, this one actually might be home co. Because usually when you see the little X's, it kind of stamped off the I side. Right. And they did mark it 1986 is when they probably received him. So he is the first little guy that's coming in the first group. And he's just really happy. He's got both his carrots. I was able to find another one of these online. And that's the way they painted them. So he's not missing any paint on his carrots. So he'll be the first one in the second group at $10. Then this little buddy I found, I don't know if they're part of the same series, but I found them at the same time. And it looks like somebody signed the bottom too. So, and it seems like it's around the same year. I think that says, maybe that says 88, 88 or 86. So $10 on the two sets of bunny springtime little figurines. And again, I thought this guy needed a sidekick. And this one measures just about two and a half inches tall. So two and a half inches tall. And he has actually a little... He has a little, fl he has a little uh, flower as his hat. So he grabbed the, it must be going to rain, and he needed a little hat, and he's got his twofer sticking out. So $10, oh, Glowy, I see you. Thank you so much. And at 10 so the two bunnies is one choice. So I matched them together. I don't think they came as a set, but I'm pretty certain that the little chicks were a set. So I believe one would be the mom, one would be the baby. So I see Metal Girl in at 12. Thank you guys so much. Let's count them down. I'll hold up one of each. I like side eye. So let's hold side eye and let's hold little guy with the uh, flower on his for a hat, for a hat. So we'll count them down 13 or more, uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, bid end. How are you, Steph? She sells stuff by the seashore. Please make sure to give her channel a follow. She has really fun sales as well. Metal Girl, I see you're just in case of 20. Thank you so much. We're just waiting on that bid end from Karen G. And I see it on my phone. There it is. So Metal Girl, $12. You just got to let me know which sets did you want? Did you want little chickies? Did you want the little chickies at your bit of 12 or did you want the little bunnies? And you're more than welcome to take both sets if you want, but maybe you just decorate with bunnies or <clears throat> chicks. And then Chloe, you will have backup. You will have backup. We'll highlight you there. And then Metal Girl, just let me know if you want little chicky friends or little rabbit. Okay, you got the bunnies. So then Glowy, just let me know. Did you want the chickies? And if you don't want the chickies for 10, we'll bring them back for the recap. All right. Thank you, guys. Noelle and Patty Rose, you gals crack me up. <laughs> you crack me up. All right. I'd like to go to dinner with both of them. I think I that would, would be fun. Would that would be fun. Um, $14, Jason. Okay. All right. I had um, a blue version of one of these a couple weeks ago when I had a sale with Heather. Um, and I have a white one tonight. Um, so this is just a little lot that I put together. So this is a little Napco show you the bottom little napco um fluffy floofy really floofy um so this is real fur for the tail nice and fluffy there um a little planter so it's just a little white bunny um with the pink accents um i'm not sure if that's supposed to be an egg or just a little planter but um i've popped some easter grass in there so you're going to get everything that is in there too um i have a little vintage easter bunny cupcake pick and um, a little a teeny tiny bouquet of little flocked pink millinery flowers, a little sparkly egg, and I'm going to take the grass out so I can show you the inside of the planter. So I will include all of that in there. Well, there's glitter in there from the egg, um, but it is nice and clean in there. Um, not really, there's no chips or anything. There's a little bit of crazing I see on the surface, but no chips or repairs on the bunny at all. So I'm gonna put my little 
I don't know why I did that. My Hang little thingy is back in there. There we go. There's a little bouquet. Oh, oh, I lost the egg. The egg is gone. The gate. <laughs> I will get the egg and put it back in there. Um, but the little bunny just looks like he's poking out of the grass in there. So measurement for this is three and a half by four. Three and a half by four for the planter part. All right. So we're going to count that down. I see um, William's in at 25. So we're looking for 26 or more. Um, William, I thought you weren't collecting Easter. <laughs> little shade there. All right. We're going to count that down. Uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, five, four, three, two, one, fit end. So the blue one that I had a couple weeks ago was a narco. This one yep. is Napco. They both made them. It's like the same mold. Yep. And they did different eyes for the Napco ones too. Yeah. Two different All variations. Right. Here's the bit end from Karen. Thank you so much. Mr. William, you did not need your just in case you're not. Okay. Well, it's not officially a collection then. It's just cuteness. Well, bunny is bunnies can stay out year round. They don't have to be just for Easter. Agreed. Coming to you, sir. Thank you so much. Agreed. And my chat's acting really weird. So, Glowy, maybe you got filtered. I just wanted to round back for some uh, to, to housekeeping. Did you want the chicks for $10? Okay, I got you. Okay. Must be a heck of a lag or I got filtered. So, Glowy... Thank you so much. I got you for the chicks. So my next round is going to start at $10 and I have a little glass bunny and let's hopefully it shows. Oh, it's reading very clear, but you guys are going to have to take my word for it. It is, it is a very light pink. So there we go. If I tilt it a little bit, it is not clear. It is a very light pink in person. It is like a very bubble gummy pink. Okay. I should have taken a picture of it, but you can see if I show it up close, you can kind of see the, the pink in there. So you guys will have to take my word for it. The little glass bunny is pink, okay? It's not a very bright pink. He is a very transparent pink, but he is just a cute little figurine, okay? He does still have his original tag on the bottom. I believe he's probably from the 80s. He's made by Oneida Crystal, and he is a small little nugget. He is just about two and a half inches tall by two inches wide. So this company made a couple different colors, if that's what you're into. But this one is pink. So again, um, camera doesn't do me justice. It is reading very clear. But you'll have to take my word that it is a very, very pale pink. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, John. I get so paranoid because I don't want folks to be coming in. Do you and have a like, white oh. piece of paper you can put behind it? It might show the pink a little. What color did you say, Amy? White. Yeah, let's see if the white, did that seem to help it at all? Up in the ears, I think you can tell. Yeah. It's a little pink. Yeah. It actually, honestly, to be full honest with you, the vase I have coming up, if you can see the pink on here, mm. that's the color pink that this is. So, um, but it's a, it's a 1980s crystal bunny. Uh, no impacts, like it has fallen, no chips to it. I love the way the ears are. They actually gave him little eyes. They're little dimpled eyes. So he probably was put into a mold. Thank you, Debbie. I see you in at 10. So he does have little eyes and he does have a little nose right there. And his little ears are pulled back. And again, this little nugget here, he measures just about two and a half inches tall by three inches wide. So you can leave him out all year round. He's just about the right size. And the clarity of the glass would go well with your bluebirds. So I was thinking maybe you want to have, you know, some bluebirds on your ledge, put a little bunny in there. He can be the little rebel rouser. So we got some more rounds. Let's go ahead and count them down. Debbie's in at 10. We're looking for 11 or more. You can use it just in case if you are an active bidder. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. And I'm upside down in a bunny's belly. Boy, that's weird. Guys, guys, let me out of the bunny. Like a whole other dimension. <laughs> it's not funny, guys. I got to get out of the bunny. Please, <laughs> guys, anybody? Thank you, Karen G, for the bid end. So, Debbie, it's yours for $10. Congratulations. 
All right, Miss Amy. Okay. I have two Easter bunny lots or Easter basket lots um, tonight. And I one is smaller and one is a little bit larger. I'm going to start with the smaller one um, tonight. This is going to start at $20, Jason. Okay, you got it. And um, so you're going to get everything that you're seeing. And I've been waiting to finish these. Um, and I found some ephemera over the weekend to top them off. Um, so I'm going to, you're going to get everything that's in the basket and I'll take it out and show it to you a little bit closer. So a uh, vintage basket um, is the base and the basket for this one measures four by six and three quarters. Okay. So um, let me take all the little bits and bobbles out here so we can look at everything. So the first thing is this little wooden bunny that's in there um, dressed in red and is holding a little egg. Now this one's not marked made in Germany, although I suspect that it is. Um, this was coming something coming out of my personal Easter stuff. I've had this for a really, really long time. Um, it's lacquered, so it's just a little painted. Um, the detail is really not showing up on the camera, but she's really cute holding her egg. And then there is a speckled little egg in there. We've got a vintage chenille. Um, this is pink, a little chicky, little vintage chenille I chicky. Love I love that. Um, it does have the little paper wrapped wire feet, little paper beak, um, and she's light pink. And then um, you get the Nancy Ann storybook doll. And I have attached this tiny little spun cotton bunny to her arm. So she does have articulated um, legs and arms there, but I've attached the little spun cotton bunny and the bunny is holding a tiny little um, chenille carrot there, awesome. has paper ears, super cute. And then um, the ephemera I stuck in here. So this is um, antique Easter ephemera. It's a little booklet. I love these little booklet cards, um, a happy Easter. And on the back it says um, Elise, Henderson from Esther Schneider, I think is what it says. And it doesn't have a date on it, but it's it's very like early 1900s or late 1800s either way. And it says, um, I bade these long-eared bunnies go hopping off to you and wish you happy Easter and say, I told them to. Really Gosh. cute. I love these little book yeah. things. They're just super cute. And then I put some um, little silk flowers in there to kind of tie the colors in and some Easter grass in the bottom. So we'll put everything, put everything back in there, how it was, but you're going to get everything that's in the little basket. I love putting the little lot things together. I did too. Those baskets were the ones I made and yeah, I really enjoyed doing that. I got to do it again next year. Okay. So we've got everybody back. Everybody's back in the basket. You're going to get everything that is in there. All right. So we're looking for 29 or more. Miss Dusty Moose is in at 28. So we're looking for 29 or more. I'm going to count it down. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It ends. And they don't make Easter baskets like that anymore. They're just not no. the same. Not the same. <laughs> Patty. All right. I see Debbie. <laughs> I see her just in case. All right. Right, right before Karen's bid end. All right. So um, over Dusty's 28, Debbie is going to take it for 29. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And Patty, I could collaborate with Bill on that one and see if he has any money tree seeds and we could put them in the bat in the little bat. Oh, that would be good. That would be good. That's funny. All right, guys, this next item Tina found, I got to give her credit. This is probably my favorite thing for the evening. Okay. This is a wall pocket. Okay. I believe that this is a California pottery company. I could not find another version of this. There is some markings on the back that I will show you. But I do believe that this is probably 1940s, early 1950s California pottery, okay? It is this sun bonnet with all these gorgeous flowers, very pastel colors. They even painted a little bee on the side. The bee is my favorite part. He's buzzing around. 
Then here on the back, I kept the original string on here in case that's how you decide to hang it, but it does have a little hole to hang on the wall. And then all it has is what I think is some kind of a M, some kind of an inventory number, okay? So it is a wall pocket, very clean on the inside. It is very heavily glazed, like, you know, California pot, like Clemens uh, Pottery or Clemens California uh, Pottery is, or Rio Hondo. It's got a really high glaze. So this can be used in a couple different ways. You don't have to hang it as a wall pocket. You could sit it down on your table and use it just as a hat um, or use it as a wall pocket. So the wall pocket is right here in the back. You could pop some flowers out. You could even put this by the door and pop your mail in it, you know, before you need to mail it or send it out. The world could do a ton of things with this. It's a heavy, heavy glazed piece of pottery, minimal crazy, no chips, no cracks. Look at the details on all those flowers from the lavenders to the I've blues. I've never seen this one. I've seen some other hat wall pockets, but I've not seen one shaped like that. Like I said, Amy, this is probably one of my favorite pieces. If you guys are into like gardening, if you guys are into like a spring theme, if you guys collect bees, again, look at that bee. I love that depiction of the bee. With, and he's like a honey yellow that they made him. It's a big size too. It measures eight and a half inches, eight and a half <laughs> inches, and then six and a half across. So no chips, no cracks, no issues. There is a little bit of like discoloration right up here to the top, Okay. I think maybe somebody had flowers in it and maybe some coloring seeped into the glaze, but it's in superb condition. Look at how they even painted that bow. So it fits a lot of colorways. It's very spring, very Easter. And again, it is a wall pocket. So you can see right there. And again, no Google image, nothing else was helping me figure out what any of that means, but definitely speaks like it's California pottery. So. Let's go ahead and count it down. We have a bit of 18. We are looking for 19 or more if anybody's interested. And if you want to use it just in case, you have to be an active bidder. So let's count it down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, to one bid end kbe has the top bid at 18 so we're looking for 19 or more of the bid end from karen g thank you karen so much and thank you so much kim for being our mods and bid enders and there it is so you didn't need you just in case congratulations it's coming to you for 18 dollars. all right miss amy uh 24 jason okay okay and i found him over the weekend and i I couldn't say no. So good, I Amy. I, I can't say no good. to the plush. They just hop right in my arms. Um, and he was one that I found over the weekend. And I love the spots on him. Um, he That's was good. just such a unique one. I've not seen this one before. I actually couldn't find him. I don't know the maker for this one. Um, he's very lightweight. He doesn't like weigh a ton. So I don't think he's, he, he doesn't feel like he's stuffed with sawdust to me. Um, right. I'm not sure what he's stuffed with, but um, he's not super heavy at all. But he is, the base color for his fur is kind of like, um, like peachy almost. It's kind of peachy. And then the spots on him are like gray and then um, kind of like a rusty, like a rusty yellow. Um, and I believe that this is original like ribbon for him. He's got bright pink eyes, a little pink pom-pom nose, a little tongue, the sticking out. Now there's pink satin in the ears. Um, he, he doesn't have any holes um, or anything going on with the seams or anything like that. Now, um, a lot of the times with the bunnies, they will have armature, a uh, wire armature in there so you could bend it. He doesn't, but he does have some sort of um, like filament in here. Like it, it feels like a very hard plastic where it, it helps them stand upright. Um, but not meant to bend, all right? So there's no wire in there. There's not any wire in anything else for him, but he does sit up really nicely. And um, he's just got the little little nub and tail back there on the back. So there's a side profile I love for you. Him. He's really nice and tall. So measurement for him, he is 14 tall to the top of the ear, seven and a half this way and then five across um, at the feet at the bottom. I think he's really cute. And you can leave him out past Easter, oh, yeah. my goodness. He's oh, just yeah. a spring cutie, all right? So I see um, Charlie Brown's in at 25. Thank you so much. 
So we're looking for 26 or more on little bun bun. And I do have, um, if you guys saw on my Instagram page, I, I gave a spa day to another bunny. Bunny, that Pinky has been nicknamed Pinky, um, is coming a little bit later. Uh, but I thought I'd bring this guy out first. All right, so we're going to count bunny down, looking for 26 or more. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, bunny bid at. Those eyes on him, those bright I know, I love the pink eyes. eyes. I really do. They do not glow or anything. I did test that out. So good. All right. There's the bid end from Karen. Some just in cases in play there at the end. Charlena, I saw your 33. Dusty Moose had a just in case of 35, but Charlie Brown had a just in case of 40. So Charlie Brown. Bunny is coming to you for 36. Charlie Brown, I can't remember if you've bought from me before. I apologize if you have. Um, thank you. If you haven't, please make sure and email me um, your information tonight. Thank you so much. And welcome in, Helen. We'll be quiet. I hear you're you're watching at work, so we'll be we'll be quiet, Helen. But make sure you follow the New England Thrifter. Okay, give her a follow. Same name here on YouTube. So. $14 and there is a repair. There is a repair to the boy bunny, but it's good. It's so good. It fooled me until I got it under the ring light. So that's why these are only starting at $14. But these are the larger composition ones that are made in the late 60s. Okay? He still has his original made in Japan sticker on it. Now he probably said something nasty to the missus and she took his head off. But if you can see, you can just see a little discoloration of glue but he's in really superb condition. I mean, the only place maybe you could see is like maybe right there, okay? But these are large bunnies. So the head was repaired. The color on these is tremendous. Thank you, Kathy. And these are primar primarily cold painted, okay? So to find them with this much paint is kind of amazing. Now, when I say composition, they used like a ceramic pulp back in the day. I think it was to make the process a little bit cheaper. They really pumped out the carolers in the 60s, the Christmas pieces. Yeah. And the then, angels. Yeah. Exactly. Then during the Easter season, they, they put these out. I don't think they made quite as many of these as they did some of the Christmas pieces. But these are larger. She has remnants of where her sticker was. And then what they did was over here, this would be an opening. They just put like a sticker over top and painted. That was the process that they did. So you can see that she is in very good shape. I love the colors, the blue eyes, the fact that they actually, like the one, I had some on Monday, they antiqued them, but it was a darker antique. Here they brushed in a little bit of blue to give blue detail to her. You have her little bandana, which is like a purple, pink, lavender color. She has a little basket full of eggs. Again, these don't have to be Easter. These could be all spring, uh, but definitely good for Easter. She has a polka dot dress. They measure roughly about, about nine inches tall, about nine inches tall by about three inches wide. So spin her around. You can see her paint is in remarkable condition. Again, any anything you see, the, uh, the extra white, that's just the ring light. So there she is up close and personal. Then he's a very happy man. He's bringing home the carrots. None of the paint on these glow. Some of them don't have any day glow paint. These do not. And he's just a dapper dude. Look at him dressed up in his Sunday vest. And I mean, he's even got like a little like button action going on here. He's a fancy dude, but he has been has had a, a head neck issue and it is has been repaired. So, but other than that, they're in really good condition. And honestly, to find these two as a set, you don't see them together all that. I long. love the blue eyes on those. They're I just too. so good. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy. Oh, thank you, Amy. Wait, wait. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> thank you, Amy. I'm just carrying my baskets off the market. All right, let's count them down because I, you know, y'all know me. I could sit here and make these talk for 20 minutes. So I'm pretty sit. sure we could talk everything in the sale. I think we could. To. We could. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I bring home the carrots. And I bring home the eggs. All right, Kathy, I see you're 14. Let's go ahead and count them down. We're looking for 15 or more. And Karen G is our official month bid ender. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 
13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Oh, John, she might have to take over. No, no, she doesn't. I just think these are just so doggone cute. I love these. Kathy, I see you're just in case. Thank you so much. But there is the bid end. So they're coming home to you for $14. Thank you so very much. All right, Miss Amy. All right, 28. All right. All right. I have a little Holt Howard action this okay. evening in the form of Slick Chick. Um, I had never come across these in the wild before, but they are not complete. Um, these are the top. Um, so these are called the Slick Chick Egg Shakers. And the bottom of them would have been their little egg shells. And what the bottoms are are egg cups. And the tops, which are these guys, are the shakers. So their little shells, um, their egg shells were missing when I found them. But my gosh, they're so darn cute. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't leave them behind. And of course, they're still cute for figurines even, and, and they sit just fine um, without their little egg bottoms. So they would have had a cork in here to plug the top, um, which is where you could use the shaker, all right? But they're just little birdies. They're just so cute, um, yeah. even though that they don't have their bottom. These are from 1958. And where the Holt Howard marking and sticker would have been would be on the bottom of the egg cup. So there's no um, markings on the shaker portion at all. Um, the only thing that's on here are the S and P for the salt and pepper. Okay. Um, but no Holt Howard marking, but I do know that these are Holt Howard. They are the slick chick is what they're called. Um, there's no chips on them. They're in lovely shape. There's just a tiny bit of crazing that I can see on the white ceramic, um, but nothing really major, but they're just so happy to look at. Um, definitely great for springtime, not just for Easter. So I thought I would bring them tonight. I think they would look really cute popping out of um, a basket, um, you know, one of the glass Fenton baskets or something like that. They would look really cute popping out of there. Or if you could find some egg cups, the larger size mm -hmm. egg cups yep. to set them on top of, then they could have a little base. Um, and once in a while, the bottoms of these do pop up on eBay. Um, very rarely do they, um, but I just couldn't leave these guys behind. They were just too cute. Well, I, and, can't, and, I can't say no to Holt Howard. I, and, I can't. and Amy, you, you hit a good point. The bottoms do because folks see the Holt Howard sticker, which is on the bottom, and then they bring them to the eBay or to yeah. the, the yeah. other online. Yeah. That Because at least it's there, so they know what they are. To well, sell. There, was, there was a possibility that maybe once upon a time in their life, their bottoms might have gotten broken and that, you know, right. they decided to still keep the shakers around, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, and if you did want to use these, they do sell replacement corks um, for the salt and pepper shakers on Amazon. You can get a whole bag for like next to nothing um, for a replacement. But Really good paint on these guys still, no chips, mm -hmm. just minimal crazing. Uh, they do measure three by three. Three by three is the size, okay? So I see Karen's in at 28, thank you so much. So we are looking for 29 or more. I'm going to count them down. I think Kim's probably doing the bid end for yep. this round. Yep. All right, so we're gonna count them down. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Amy, their cold paint on their mouth is in really good condition. Usually that red is always like nipped yeah. up or missing. Yep. So good. All right. There is Kim's bid end. Thank you for filling in, Kim. All right, Karen, these are coming to you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. And those bottoms, they'll show up. They'll show up. All right, guys, $16. And I've been wanting to bring a recipe box for a long time. <clears throat> Sad to report, it's not full of recipes. I was kind of hoping when I bought this, I bought this on an online auction and it was just a picture. And I was like, oh, please let there be like all of grandma and mama's recipes in it. There isn't. But this is in really good condition. There is a little bit of wear to the paint here or there, but this is an Ohio tin recipe container, probably from the mid 60s. I do know I had some folks comment that they remembered their moms or their grandmothers had this recipe tin. And of course, it's from Ladies Home Journal. And you can see how it's got the flower power 
uh, like uh, daisies on it. It's just, and I just, you know, John, I did a little bit of research. I didn't see a lot of them either. And I think this one is really neat. Uh, there's no major issues with it. There's no major rusting, but there is some wear to it. So of course it is, you know, the recipe treasure box. And then up here, it says never underestimate the power of a great meal. So, and you can see that the flowers do repeat and they're not faded. They're, they're painted to be like a pale pink and a darker pink. And again, we just have maybe a little bit of, you know, maybe a little bit of chipping here or there. But it is in such great condition. And this these make great risers in, in your display. So they even repeated the flowers down here. And if we can get it to show, it's embossed that it is Ohio. There's embossing here. That's where it says Ohio. I want to make sure I say it right because I always say it wrong. It's always it's Ohio Art Company. So here's your inside. The inside is very, very clean. Um, again, these make good little file boxes. They make great little recipe boxes. They make great gifts to somebody who has a new home. You gift them a vintage recipe box, maybe put some of your family's recipes in them, um, and then you pass this on to them. Or just use it as a riser. Thank you, Liz. I see you in at 16. And again, I believe from the little bit of research I could find on this, this was a premium uh, from Ladies Home Journal. I don't know how you received it, but this, you know, was something that was given from them and then you could fill. So, and it does hold your traditional sized index cards, but again, the inside is in really, really good condition. There's no rusting and, and the, the center of these, it's almost like a gold. It's like a gold tone, the center of each one of the flowers. Okay. The measurements on it, it's the traditional size of of one of these, it meant one of these recipe boxes. It measures just about three and a half inches tall. So three and a half inches that way. It's about five inches wide. And then here on the side, it comes in at about three inches deep. So, uh, but you can just see there, it, there's always a little bit of paint wear on some of these tin, you know, recipe boxes. But I'll just show you one more time, all of the great graphics on here. It is just covered with these pink, these pink flowers, they kind of look like very flower power, um, very 1960s, probably more early 60s, just a great piece. So Liz has the bid right now at 16. We're looking for 17 or more. So let's go ahead and do a countdown. Uh, we are doing just in case for active bidders. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, bid end. And this makes a great desk caddy too. I mean, you can use this for so many different things. But again, I was also thinking riser. You know, if you decorated your kitchen for the holiday, for spring, you could just use this to put like your little kitschy knickknacks on. All right, Liz, congratulations. It's yours for $16. Thank you so much. All right, Amy. All right, 28, Jason. All right. All right, I have a piece of jewelry tonight, and she's a stunner. Um, cool. I wore pink for the occasion because this um, this brooch is just gorgeous. Now, I'm going to try and get it to show on screen, but I do have a photo I emailed in. I'll let Jason put it on the screen when I tell him um, if my camera doesn't want to cooperate, which it doesn't seem like it wants to. But there we go. It's, um, it's a sparkler. It is pink, all right? And it's large. You can see how big it is. Um, and it is made in Austria. It is stamped made in Austria on the back. Um, so I believe these are Austrian crystal rhinestones. Um, just gorgeous. And my camera just is not focusing. So I'll have Jason pop the picture up there so you can see it. There we go. Now you can see all the lovely details in it. Um, uh, it's all prong set. Um, and there's two dangles on it. Uh, the larger one, and then a smaller marquee dangle at the bottom. No missing stones. Everything is intact. Um, and I will um, try and show you the marking on the back. I did not send in a picture um, on that one. But I did want to note on this rhinestone here in the center, there is a very small scratch on it. Um, but really, you kind of have to get it in like a certain angle to even see it. And I know it's not going to pick up on camera. It is very small, but that is really the only. Uh, but look how sparkly that That's is. Good. And never... it's, it's all pink. So there's the lighter shade pink for the larger ride stones and then the darker pink um, for the accent. And it is marked made in Austria. 
and there's a little nice. square uh, back here on the back and a really nice puddling on the back here. It does have a safety clasp um, here on the side. The uh, pin does not extend past the clasp. Now I did talk to Tina and I also talked to Katie at Vintage and Vinyl um, for their kind of insight on this piece. I had kind of an inclination that it was likely a vintage piece, uh, but I didn't really know how old it was. Both of them said it was probably uh, 50s. Katie said maybe even late 40s on this piece, um, but it is just absolutely stunning. Um, and there, you know, you can see kind of how big that would be on like a lapel and it would have so much movement in it uh, because of the dangles. I just, I don't come across brooches like this unless they're in a lock showcase. Um, and this one was just kind of laying out and I was like, wow, I can actually touch that. Um, I'm glad that the camera's finally cooperating with me, but my goodness, and even out in the sunlight, it even is more sparkly than it is here in my studio lighting. All right, so measurement for you real quick before I count it down. It's two inches at the top piece, two inches, and then the drop on it here is three, it's almost four inches. It's three and three quarters inches long with the dangles on it. All right, so I see Metal Girls in at 30, so we're looking for 31 or more. Um, I'll show you the back again. There's the nice puddling. And then that little square is where it says made in Austria. All right. No other markings. All right. There's no 925 or anything like that. So I can't really say what the metal is on the back. So we're going to count it down. Looking for 31 or more. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. You don't see a lot of these two dangled brooches just in the wild. I like could it. not find one that looked like this. It's amazing. Either. I did. I tried to look, but I couldn't find one. Gorgeous. All right. There is the bid end from Karen. Thank you so much for your flower bid end. Kelly, your just in case did come in after the bid end. All right. So Dusty put in a just in case of 50, but Noel put in a straight bid right before the bid end of 56. So Noel, the sparkler is coming to you. Thank you so much. Beautiful piece, Noel. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me and Amy. We're so honored that you're here with us. If you guys are not subscribed to Amy's channel, I'm sure you are, but if you're not, please do. We made it real easy. The link is down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Amy and Fatbirds, it's going to be a must-see sale. So please, please head on over there. It's going to be a good time. All right. I kind of leaned heavy on Kitsch. I'm going back to my roots. So $14, and I know we got some folks that love kitty cats, and I can't break these up, so you're going to get them both. So... Oh my gosh. I like, yeah, this, this is what, this is what now, gets, now, indeed. If I'm going to an estate sale or a flea market, the hopes of finding these kind of things is what gets me going in the morning. So um, these are probably 60s, 70s. I don't really even think 80s, but it was in fashion to go ahead and like adhere these uh, lacquered sort of uh, paper pictures onto a piece of wood. So there's remnants of its original price tag here. So I didn't take that off. And this is sort of how it hangs. It's just got its little metal hanger and you're going to get a bow. If I died and was reincarnated as a cat, that would be it right there. When I, when I found these, I literally <laughs> said, this is an Amy sale day in and oh, day my out. Word. Like, like I can't wait. You think this cat is good. Wait till you see the next one. Like, like they, I saw the preview, but I don't remember these. Like, like they're they're good, and the wood's in very good condition. There's no chips. There's no issues. There's no funky issues with the little hanger. I measured it without the little hanger included. They come in just about four and a half, so they're four and a half by three and a half. They are. They're very 1970s, and I can imagine these would have been sold at like a Hallmark kind of store or one of the little boutique kind of stores. That so you get that one. And I did, I'm not breaking them up. I'm not doing choice. You're going to get the other kitty cat <laughs> no. with it. Like, I can't with these faces. Like, you feel like you could touch their fur. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, oh, and they, 
they remind me of the greeting cards of that era. Now there is a little mm -hmm. discoloration right here, but it's underneath. So I think that was in the process. So this one has what would have had the original price tag sticker up residue on the back and it's got its little hanger. So these are cute little oh nuggets goodness. that they face one another. Like this is to me, this is my God, you get yourself like a little figurine that looks like this. You get yourself a stuffed animal like this, and you're going to catch yourself the kitchilitis. You're going to need to find a doctor because you're going to get the kitchilitis from these. Like if you guys love kitty cats and if you love like the real like uh, mid-century kind of kitsch, that is this. So we're in at 14 with Peppermint Patty. This kind of looks like Peppermint Patty a little bit. I remember the pictures, like maybe a baby Peppermint Patty, this one looks like. So... But I just think these are so gosh darn cute. And again, they are on wood and the wood is stained. But in, in that era, in that fashion, they never really, you know, put like a glaze. They never put any kind of gloss over top or a finish, but they did the center. So it's just like a like a paper that they adhered at their factory. And in that, that's what you had. OK, all right. So you get these little and you can have them going either way. I kind of like them facing each other. You know, we often say that you have that weird little doorway that you don't know where to put things. Do a gallery wall. They would look great with your crewels. You know, you have some ceramic Miller Studio chalkware pieces. They're all going to look good with this. So we have Glowy in at 16. Let's go ahead and count them down. Again, you get both. I'm not breaking them up. They came from the same estate. They're staying together. So 17 or more. We'll count down 20, 19, 18. 17, meow, meow, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. And they are very lightweight. But And usually when you find these, those pictures get all nicked up because they're never stored right. You know, they get stained, water. These are in really good shape. It's like they came like right off the wall. So I see you're just in case Peppermint Patty right before that bid end. So Glowy was our last one with a bid. So Peppermint Patty, they are yours for $17. Congratulations. Thank you so much. All right. Um, this is my last handmade Easter kitsch piece. Um, I have a, a bunny doll tonight too, but this is my last Easter kitsch. Uh, piece and I didn't get it done last week. So um, I wanted to make it a point to get it done this week. Um, this is going to start at $45 okay. just because it's a much larger um, arrangement. And um, this thing is loaded with vintage. All right. So we're going to start at the base. So the can itself is a Mrs. Leland's bunny bits. If you guys have heard us talk about butter bits, this is the Easter version, uh, Bunny Bits. Um, and it dates to, the can is from 1963, okay? And just the bunny graphics and the flowers on here, it's just an amazing tin. I've only found this tin one other time. And um, I've lined it with some blue tinsel, all right? And then in the center, and this is not super Eastery, like you could leave this out too. Um, I only put one egg in it kind of for that reason. Um, but in the center is a harder to find spun ball and flocked head bunny. Um, these are somewhat harder to come by. So when I do find them, um, I do try and pick them up, but I usually have to pay up for them. Um, and this guy has got um, kind of minty, uh, minty green vintage chenille ears, a little flocked bow. So everything that's on the bunny is original to the bunny. I haven't done anything to it. Um, right down to the little metal whiskers there. So good. I love those bunnies. Um, and I have popped into the hand a little vintage plastic watering can that I filled with uh, vintage flowers. Good. And then um, there is a flocked egg back here. Um, whole bunches of different uh, vintage flowers, mostly plastic. Um, there's a few little buttons and uh, flocked millinery that are down there. A little mushroom as well. And then there's a couple things on the back side. Now you can see the spun ball feet that the bunny have as well. I have signed it at the back and it is, I love it. I think it's one of my favorite pieces that I've made so far this year. You did but a great job. Bunny is just kind of in the flower garden, um, waiting for more flowers and critters 
to come out for spring. Measurement, because it is a larger, so this is more the size of like a coffee can. Um, the Mrs. Leland's candy tins are more the size of like a, uh, like a Folgers coffee can um, back in the day. So measurement for it, it does measure nine and a half inches tall to the top of the bunny ears and five and a half inches um, in diameter. Fantastic. All right. Kitschy goodness. Gosh, and you're right. Those little bunnies are so difficult to find. So difficult. I have one more. Like I've been like trying to space them out over the years because I don't find them um, very much at all anymore. So we're going to count this down. I see Debbie's in at 50. So we're looking for 51 or more. I'm going to count it down. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. All right, Karen, I see you're just in case. Right before that bid end. All right, there's a bid end from Kim. All right, so uh, Debbie had a 50 bid, but Karen came in there with that just in case. So Karen, this is coming to you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, thank you. And thank you so much, Kim, for being our backup mod and bid ender. If you could put your links in, let's get you some more followers over there on Vamp. And of course, Karen G, thank you so much. All right, I'm going to bring my tin of the night. I thought this was really, really unique. Now, there is some wear to it, but y'all, this is old. And you can do a lots of different things with this. This is a vintage peanut butter tin, and it is the Jack and Jill brand of peanut butter. Like, oh, that's awesome. I, I tell you, this one was a hard one to give up. Like this, I do collect some of these like large style tins or peanut butter tins. There's different store. versions of the Jack and Jill peanut butter tins, and that one does not yeah. come up very often. I've no. seen that one other time, and it was totally rusted out. No. And then this is this side, and then here is this side. Now, it is missing its lid. It does not have its lid, but it does have its handle. So good. So Jack and Jill, they, of course, you know, they went up the hill to get their pail of water and then they took a spill. So they fell down there. So, and this is actually, the company looks like it's out of Toronto, Canada. So, and I know I'm going to mispronounce the company. Is that low, low ball, low ball, blah, 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 blah. blah, blah. I don't know, but I researched this and you're right. You don't see it all that often. So it is a little rusty, but again, it is a fun little vintage tin. And what I thought is this time of the year you know, you could put some Easter grass in it. You could put an Easter bunny in it. You could use it for all sorts of different, you know, different things. You could build your own kind of riser on top of it. But I don't find these little peanut butter tins all that often, and at least in, you know, salvageable kind of shape. So it is a really, okay, so you said it right, Amy. Uh, Audrey said, you said it, you oh, pronounced wow. it right. So I'd never had this peanut butter. Did anybody else ever have this peanut butter before? I don't even know if it still exists. So it is a repeating pattern. It is like a litho pattern. It does have a little bit of rust here on the bottom. Nothing, nothing goes through though. Nothing goes through though. So you can see the inside has a little bit. Yes, it is. For, okay. It is from Canada. The tin measures five and a half inches tall. Never, I never had, okay, five and a half inches tall, and it is roughly just about six inches wide, okay? So then it says here on the side, it would have held, the contents would have been 60 fluid ounces or approximately four pounds would have been in it. Look at the flowers on here. It's very spring. They have some flowers coming up. I love the way they did the trees. It's very 1950s. The Jack and Jill font, again, yes, there is some wear to the piece. And the company, however, how'd you pronounce that name again, Amy? Are you? Lob Law. Lob Law. That's such an odd name for a company, but I'm here for it. I'm not making fun of it. I'm here for it. It says Jack and Jill peanut butter is made from the finest of um, flavors, uh, from the finest of flavors, packed peanuts, radiant, uh, roasted. It's creamy. Uh, goodness makes Jack and Jill peanut butter a favorite of everyone. Sorry, some of that font was a little hard to read in my light with their cursive. So again, I think if you guys collect advertising, it's a very fun advertising piece. 
Um, again, if you guys collect tins, I kind of thought it played off of my Ohio tin piece that I had. But I'll just get in here one more time. I do love the fact on how they painted them taking a spill. By today's standards in advertising, they would not they would not allow two kids to fall down on their advertising piece. But if you guys, you know, collect nursery rhymes, if you guys collect advertising, especially from the 1950s. See, I'm more a GIF or Peter Pan. So that's what I, I definitely. And Karen says uh, Lob, Lob Law. Now it's hard for me to say it. Right. Uh, it's a grocery store that's been around for a while. Okay. And then, yeah, I guess that makes sense down here for the bottom too company. And it's, I don't know how this ended up here in the States. Honestly, I have no idea how it ended up here in the States. I got this from the same estate that I got the tin from. So um, I don't know if maybe they traveled there. Oh, I see you, Dusty. Thank you so much for your 24. Um, I don't know. Now the wear on it, I think is the right kind of wear. We can still sort of read everything. There's no major gouges and any wear that's on this it definitely happened a long time ago. So you can see it just has the right kind of rusty crusty that I think us as vintage collectors love. And if you're a purist, I think this is kind of the best that you can get. But I just thought it was so neat. I just thought it was something very different. And I think that's what we all strive to do is to bring you guys something you never saw before. And again, it is a little pale and you can hang this. You, know, you can hang this if you wanted to. Or you could fill it with Easter grass and put like Amy's Easter bunny in it, maybe. I don't know, all sorts of things. So let's count it down. Dusty's in at 24. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for appreciating it, even though it was hard for me to say the name of the company. 25 or more. So let's go ahead and count this down just in case for active bidders. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. And don't miss, they got the old water pump up there. Those little, little Jack and Joe were working pretty hard just to take that spill and spill their water all over themselves in the mountain and all that stuff. So there's our peanut butter bid end. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> And I was kind of hoping that our Canadian friends, thank you so much, could help us out with that. So, Dusty, it is yours. Congratulations. Thank you so much. All right, Miss well, Crunchy peanut butter is my favorite, too. Okay. Peanut butter in itself is, like, one of my favorite Yeah, things it's good. Ever. I love it. Um, 25, Jason. Okay. All right. So, I'm bringing Pinky that you guys have named him um, from Inst If you guys saw... So I gave him, Mama Pam didn't do spa day on Pinky, I did. Um, and I put a post up, I, I'm thinking Sunday, yeah, it was Sunday. Um, and he he was floppy, he needed, he needed some brightening up. Um, so I, I did give him a spa day and I showed a picture of what he was stuffed with. And it's pretty, I, I've talked about this with some vintage plush that we've refurbed before that they're not stuffed with the best of things. and. Mm -hmm. The innards that came out of Pinky were a combination of like, uh, I don't know, like fiber scraps and fabric scraps, and there was wood pulp and shavings and it. Uh, ugh. So if you guys want to go over to my Instagram and see that, um, it's there. Uh, but he's stuffed with um, cotton batting now, so he's nice and plush. He doesn't have floppy neck anymore. So he what he is an, a Columbia toy just like the long eared ones um, that we had. He does have the metal, um, the metal little pink eyes that are attached there. There's no holes in him. Um, he has a little stitched nose and mouth. I have added a brand new pink ribbon to him um, and he is completely stuffed now. He was kind of, I don't know, that pulp stuff over time, mm, mm -hmm. it holds odors really, really badly. Um, yeah. And it just kind of clumps over time and makes things like kind of, you know, flop over. So um, he's nice and stuffed and he's nice and poseable and huggable now. Um, so I think he feels much better after his spa day and he certainly smells better than he did. Um, sometimes like the vintage plush are in fine condition and they don't warrant a spa day, but he really, he needed one before Easter for sure. So measurement for him, he is 21 inches long and eight inches wide. Um, to the arms. Now, um, he, this, how he was stuffed originally, um, he had kind of like, 
I don't want to, it's not a seam, but he wasn't stuffed fully in the leg so that he could sit down much easier. Um, and I stuffed him the same way when I put it back in. All right. So I see Dusty Moose is in at 25. Dusty, thank you for loving the bunnies and rescuing them. So we're going to count Pinky down. Um, I can't remember who named him Pinky. Was it Peppermint Patty? I think maybe it was you um, that named him Pinky. And I really like that name. So we're going to count Pinky down. I see Leslie's in at 27. So we're looking for 28 or more. 20, 19. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. And I forgot to tell you the color. So it's not white. It's kind of like, um, like a very light kind of minty gray. Okay. It's kind of the color. It's really not showing true on screen. He's definitely not was supposed to be white. Um, usually you can see kind of in the seams where maybe the color didn't fade as much. And it's kind of like a very light green. Okay. So cute. There's the bed end from Karen. Thank you so much. So Leslie had a 27 dusty moose, put in a just in case. So Michelle, um, Pinky is coming to you for 28. Thank you so much. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. I saw Circle 7 hop in. How are you? It's so good to see you. My next item is going to start at 12, okay? And I have a vintage uh, perfume bottle, a vintage perfume bottle. And uh, part of it is glass, part of it is plastic. So it is this oil lamp, and it is filled with the original perfume. Now, those of you that know the vintage perfume of the 40s and 50s, you remember that the apple blossom was very popular, and that's what I believe this is filled with. Now, the top part here will take the little shade off, okay, so you can see that the bottle is sealed. So it will be safe to ship. It is sealed. Now, I didn't take the little plastic piece off, so there is a little bit of maybe dust that settled down in there. So this is a little plastic sleeve that fits over the top of the bottle, and Rose, thank you, I see you in at 12. And then the little plastic shade fits over top of it. Now, the shade is this uh, metallic colored, and it is pink. Some places it faded more back to silver than it did the pink. So it's not as vibrant as the underside. This side sort of shows the pink, but also shows a lot of the silver. So I don't know if it sat near a window or what. The little bit of research I could do, I do believe that this is from the 1950s. It comes with the little, uh, this is a gift uh, chosen just for you with a little tag, and then you would have filled it out on the inside. And then the company is Lander, okay? So I'm not familiar with that. I didn't do much research on it. But the contents of this, I do believe it is the original perfume. And the color of this is pink. If you're reading true to color on your side. So um, again, then you just take the little shade, pop it on top, and then it's just this cute little oil lamp. And the base is a nice heavy glass. So there you can see some of the fluid moving around there. And again, I feel confident in shipping this because it is, it is sealed. So when the shade is on, it measures about seven inches tall. So it's just this darling little perfume bottle. You could place it on your vanity. You could place it anywhere you want to. Um, and the pattern on here, it's like a grapevine. So it's a, a grapevine pattern. So if you guys collect, you know, paneled grape uh, glass, this might pair well with it. It's just something different, something unique. If you guys collect things and you do like your little vintage vanities, maybe you even want to wear the perfume. Um, you probably still could. I'm sure it has a lot of potency to it. But again, just please note, I cleaned everything, but I did not clean down in here because in the past I've had some of these little plastic sleeves get ruined on pieces. So I opted not to. So usually we try to clean everything so it's ready to, to use or to decorate with. You might want to address that if it bothers you. But I also love the fact that it has its original little tag. And that's just a cute little darling tag if it wants to focus in the purple and the pink and that font and the fact that it's still on there. So let's go ahead and count it down for Rose. Thank you so much for the bid. We're looking for 13 or more on the vintage little uh, oil light perfume bottle. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 
nine eight seven six five four three two one bid end we're just waiting on that bid end we're looking for 13 or more definitely 1950s yep it's just a cute little piece and i'm happy that it survived so that it can be enjoyed for years to come there's the bid end so thank you so much rose it's yours for 12 dollars. congratulations thank you so much all right miss amy okay uh Thirty dollars, Jason. I have my bigger Easter bunny basket lot um, up next. So this one is quite a bit larger than the first one I showed you. So you're going to get everything that's in it. Um, again, I found my final piece of ephemera to complete it um, over the weekend. So I'm going to show you everything that's in it. So I'll tell you the basket size first. So the basket is 10 inches tall and five and a half inches wide. Okay. So there's lots of goodies inside. So we'll pull them all out so you can see them. All right, so first um, I'll show you this. This is dated um, 1902 on the back. Now this is a German Easter calling card. And I, um, it's really, really cool. Now this bunny here is missing the ears, but I didn't really care because I've never seen uh, one of these. So um, it's, it's Miss. So it's Fräulein Ofern um, there. So that's Miss Ofern. Um, if it was Frau often, that would be Mrs. So it's Miss. Um, but then we've got the little dancing bunnies holding the eggs and the little fence. Um, I love the embossed in it. And it is dated uh, 1902 in pencil on the back. I just thought, my gosh, that's okay. cool. So I had to put that in the basket. Then um, you're getting a whole bunch of eggs. I'm going to take the eggs out. I know I'm not going to get this put back together how I originally had it, but we've got um, purple flocked and then we've got a little beaded speckled and two other little speckled eggs in there. Then you get, I love these. I love these puffball chicks. Um, very old um, puffball chicks, a nice big one, and then a little bit smaller one there. Still have some feathers and their little paper beaks and eyes and paper wrapped wire feet. So two of those. And then an antique um, Easter postcard there. This one has not been used on the back, so you could actually still use that for something if you wanted to. Then we do have a paper mache bunny. Um, he he does have some wear to him, which I don't mind. Um, I, I do like the really brightly colored ones, but I like the ones that have um, a little wear and discoloration to them, gives them some age. This one's not marked Germany or anything on the bottom, um, but typically they are. So paper mache bunny. And then there are a couple sprigs of flowers and then the Easter basket that's full of Easter grass. I am not going to get it put back together quite as nicely as it looked, but I'll try and put everything back in there. All right. So um, again, the basket itself measures 10 inches tall and five and a half inches wide. So we've got paper mache bunny, two of the older puffball chicks. We'll get them in there and a bunch of eggs. Okay. So it does not look as nice as I had it before. Oh, um, but I will. what I'll do is I'll put it together nicely and I'll take a picture of the basket and send it with it. That way, if you want to put it back together how I had it um, or you want to do something else with it, um, I'll include that with it. All right. So I see Dusty's in at 30. So we're looking for 31 or more. I'm going to count it down. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bunny bit end. Again, they don't make baskets like that anymore. It's just got a look. It's got a look and a feel that never could be duplicated. All right. There's the bunny basket flower chick bit end. <laughs> Covered all the emojis there. All right, Dusty, this is coming to you. Thank you so much. All right. All right, guys. I have one of my larger ticket items tonight. And when I show you, I think you guys will know why. If you guys are glass lovers, you know that 
Uh, two things are going in its favor here. Uh, it is one of the melon style vases by Fenton, which are very collectible. Okay. Over the past few years, these melon vases have become very sought after and collectible. This is one that you don't find that often. I'm not saying it's rare. You just don't find it that often. It is a larger one. Okay. Usually they're the size a little smaller, but this is your larger one. And I'm going to still go ahead. And even in my research, I'm going to call this the, um, I'll go ahead and call it the peach crest, okay? Because when they just had the rim done like this, in my research, it means it's the older Fenton. Then as they continued, they started to do the inside, in essence, case it with the pink, but also called it the peach crest. So I do believe that this is still called peach crest. It is older Fenton. It is not marked. So this is probably the late 50s into the very early 60s or mid 60s in that era somewhere. It's in very good condition with no chips, no cracks. If you guys love pink, then you're gonna love this. So the effect of it with the milk glass made the pink look very peachy, okay? And it's reading true to color. It is a larger one, which if you guys are going to do research on eBay or you're gonna do research on other platforms, you always have to take the measurement in. Like you could go ahead and slug melon vase, uh, peach crest into it, and you might see higher or smaller price points, but you need to keep in mind that the smaller ones on the pictures look the same as the larger ones. So the larger ones don't come around that often, and these melon ones are very, very collectible. So I think it has like a genie kind of feel to it, and it almost looks like the tip of an epern coming out. It's probably one of my favorite uh, vase styles that Fenton made. So it measures eight inches tall. It is eight inches tall, and then at its widest point, it is about five inches wide. In all my years of selling the Fenton or these melon vases, I've never had one of the larger ones. And I have to tell you that it's probably now one of my favorite. I do like the smaller ones, but this large one is really, really nice. So this would look good for you to pop some of your you know, spring flowers into, some of your flowers from the summer. If you guys do pink or if you guys are into these pastel colors, you can't, you're going to get addicted to it. Once you purchase a piece of this, you're going to want other pieces. And it is milk glass and it is the melon, which is what it, what it refers to down here at the bottom part. Again, it is not stamped Fenton on it. So it's probably prior to the 1971 era. Uh, when they did a lot of this, I had some of the amber crest that I had sold. A lot of the, the pieces when they, they made it like this, seem to be of concentrated at 55, 65 period. Um, that's just when they did it. And then in the later versions, they started to case the inside with the color they were using. So um, again, that's the best of my knowledge. I'm no expert on Fenton, but I have sold enough of it that that's what I believe um, are the facts on the peach crest. So, but it is in essence pink and they just call it peach because the milk glass kind of dials it in to look a little more peachy, but under direct light, it is definitely pink and it's gorgeous. There's no chips to any of the, the crimping whatsoever. And one more time, it is the larger one, which you do not see that often. You usually get the smaller one. So let's go ahead and count this down. Noel has the bid. Thank you so much, Noel. And at 38, it's a gorgeous stately piece of glass. Uh, would be a great centerpiece for your spring tables, Easter table, all those things. So let's count it down 39 or more, and we'll count down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. And of course, they made all the marrying pieces like nappies, compotes, bonbons little fluted vases, all sorts of things. So if you wanted to collect more, but I'm telling you, it's, it's really doggone gorgeous in person and it's big. I've never seen one that large. It's always the much smaller one. I, I was so excited when I found it. So Noel, congratulations. It's going to look good with your Aqua Quest. No, your Amber Crest that I sold you. So I know it's going to look good with all your glass. Congratulations. Thank you so much. All right. Um, $12, Jason. 
All right. All right. I thought I would bring this tonight. I have this book already, but I found another copy of it. Um, if you guys love to like see what's out there or see something like, oh, I didn't even know that that, that existed. I would love to collect that sort of thing. I love these kind of books. They're also a great reference reference guide um, for dating things. So um, I have this one already, so I didn't need two. Um, it does date to uh, 1992 was the publishing date of it. So there's all sorts of things in here. There's It, it, it kind of runs the gamut, although I'm sure that it's not even close to complete um, for what's out there. But there's plush in here, different kind of plush. Um, I love to see these rabbits. This one here looks very much like the giant bunny that um, Ariana at the Withering Cottage has uh, behind her, except hers is dressed in like a dress, but very similar style, 1930s rabbit. So um, there's one of those long-eared Columbia toy bunnies with the printed satin in there. Um, so there's all sorts of different kinds of plush that are in here. I love this book. Um, I love the holiday ones just to look at some of the different things that are out there. Um, so I'll skip ahead from the plush. Um, there's something that we would recognize, the My Toy Rubber Face Girl Bunny that I had last week. She's in there. Um, but then we start getting into some of the candy containers and chalkware pieces um, that are out there. I just saw this guy. Um, I filmed him in my video that came out over the weekend. He's at Jeffrey's Antique Gallery in Finley, Ohio, um, that same bunny there. But there's some of the chalkware bunnies. I'll skip ahead. Some of the um, paper mache um, kind of pieces. I love that bunny cart. That is so That's cool. Good. I'm not going to try and show you everything in the book, but I wanted to show you some of the different categories that are in here. There's pull toys. There's different toys. Um, some of the candy container pieces. Some of the mechanical wind up things that are in there um and then we start getting into the paper mache eggs oh that bunny is he playing a guitar is he playing a oh my <laughs> oh, he play? oh he's celluloid oh this gosh a celluloid a celluloid rabbit oh. but then i love this section here yeah. the different um candy container eggs and yeah, the foil good. eggs the metal ones all in there um what else what else then we get into some other like the little chicks and ducks there's a little section of that in here too chickens and ducks and then we get into different kinds of baskets all sorts of cool stuff in here so um great piece to put out on your table for friends that are coming over for easter perhaps and like to leave through that so i see um jill's in at 16 so we're looking for 17 or more um, Leah, yes, Lisa, I love Jeffrey's antique gallery. It's great. It's about a two hour drive for me though. So, um, we're looking for 17. I'm going to count it down. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we've got some like egg dye remember those things i had a couple oh, yeah. weeks ago yeah there they are oh yeah Very so good cool. all right i see dusty's got a just in case and peppermint patty also has a just in case there's the bid end from karen um dusty put in a straight bed Jill, your 24 did come in after the bid. And so, Michelle, this is coming to you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. That's a, that's a fantastic book. And they are not printing those kind of books anymore. So No, I love those reference books. I could spend hours looking at those. Get yourself a cup of coffee or a cocktail, depending on the time of the day, mm -hmm. and just sit and leaf through that. There's nothing more tranquil or peaceful than that. So. All right, guys, I've never brought this kind of pottery before, but I was thinking spring. I was thinking your Easter table. I was thinking your coffee bar. I was just thinking these are great for this time of the year. They are made by a company that kind of owned the late 40s and 50s. It was a company called Lou Ray, and these are part of their pastels, okay? So for $14, you're going to get the sugar and lid and the creamer. And yes, I know they're different colors, 
But back then, you used to go down to the general store and pick which colors you wanted. So you could mix and match whatever you wanted. And traditionally, most folks would always pink, pick one of the pink ones and one of the periwinkle, if Bill's watching, periwinkle style blue sugar dishes. So a lot of times when you find these are chipped up or damaged, there's absolutely no damage at all to the rim. That white spot is actually glazed over. Remember, they did miss a little bit because they were usually in a hurry. Okay. The lid is even marked USA, which is amazing. It's even marked USA. It has sort of this uh, flower bud deco style tip here on the top in very good condition. It's reading true to color. And here is your two handled sugar bowl. Let me get my finger out of there. Again, there's no damage at all to it. It's in very good condition. Sometimes these do craze over age. This one is in gorgeous condition and it is marked Lou Ray. So Lou Ray has either really gone up in popularity, come back down. Now it just kind of maintains. If people are looking for this kind of style for their uh, tables, it's very 1950s. It's very soft Donner Heat style 1950s. So the sugar measures five and a half wide and then roughly about four inches tall when you add in the finial. So um, again, very good condition. You're going to get the sugar. These are fun to use in your coffee bar. These are fun, you know, friends come over, use this. They're really going to be wowed. You can see how they actually added some of this detail. It's almost like, um, like lace, almost like ribbon, the way they made it. It's a really gorgeous uh, piece. There's no chips to the spout. You can see the inside is very, very clean. And then you can see that it is stamped Lou Ray down here on the bottom. And again, you could, thank you. Karen, I never highlighted it. Something is weird with my- I was my just going to say, I didn't think that yeah. you highlighted your- <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. It's always good to have somebody covering my back. Thank you. So $14. If anybody's interested, I will take another minute now that I have my banner up. Thought I had it, but I hit the wrong one. So you're going to get the creamer. So in essence, you're getting them for $7 each. So 1950s, uh, pottery at its best. They are ceramic. You can use these. They are glazed on the inside. So if you wanted to put your cream in there or, you know, use it for something else, you definitely could. I think the pink is just gorgeous. And then I do love the fact that it's two, two different colors. And again, this isn't like a married set. When you used to go and buy the, the dinnerware, you could pick and choose what colors you wanted. And they have like a Oh, gosh, they have, I think they even have a different color blue. I think they have a yellow. They have all sorts of different uh, pastel colors that you can mix and match. And normally folks would uh, pick themselves a uh, blue, periwinkle, or the pink. So, again, great for Easter time, great for your Easter table. Should get to you in time by then. I feel confident in saying that. And you can see it's stamped there on the bottom. And you guys could collect pieces of this, platters, dishes, all sorts. These are even fun just to use to put your sugar packets in. Leave them on your counter. It is. It is kind of very Fiesta wear. Absolutely. This is, I would say that it feels about the same as Fiesta wear, except it's softer. It's like a softer. And I love the fact that they still stamped the inside USA. You can really get a feel for the color. And that is not a chip right there. They just missed it and glazed over it. So just wait another moment for the lag because I didn't have my banner up. Gosh, the host doesn't even know what he's doing first day. And that is faintly marked Lou Ray. But I'm not seeing any interest. That's okay. We'll bring him back during the recap. We're going to keep on going. All right, Miss Amy. All right. $8, Jason. All right. All right. If you guys remember the pair of duck um, pot holders I had last week. And if you weren't here, I'll tell the story again. Um, or if you have been at any of Cindy Mimi's treasure cottage sales, um, you might have heard the story already. Um, she came to visit us at the antiques, uh, antique show that mama Pam and I do, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and there was a vendor that had like 300 to 400 pot holders. And I went through them all and, um, it, come to find out it was like a pen pal situation um, that these group of ladies in different states um, had like a theme that they went with and exchanged pot holders. And a lot of them made their own patterns. They didn't follow a produced pattern. They just made it up as they went. Um, and so I have another one tonight. And um, this one was made by the same lady that made the ducks. So the, the Mr. and the Mrs. Duck pot holders from last week. 
Um, this lady here made this one, um, Albertine Dreyer out of Inglewood, Colorado, and it is dated um, 1966. Um, so most of them had these um, tape, you know, pinned to the back of them. And if they were an original pattern, it said so on the back. So this was um, out of her brain that she created this pattern. So it is a little basket weave um, here, and then there's different colored eggs, and then the cute little chicky popping out of the top. And the colors in this are kind of a darker gold yellow, um, variegated for the edging and the little basket. Then we've got a dark purple, a blue, and a pink egg, and then the little chick um, popping out of the center there. It's nice and clean, no staining or anything on it. So cute. Um, these just blew me away. I could not believe the creativity that some of these, and I have, I have some Halloween ones to come later. Um, I have some Christmas ones, Valentine's ones. I have all sorts of different ones. Um, some more kind of general ones too that I'll be bringing to some other sales, but I think these are just fascinating. Cindy got a bunch of really cool ones too. She got a lot of anthropomorphic ones. Um, so if you guys like these, um, between Cindy and I, I think we have probably about close to 40 pot holders to pick from <laughs> between the two of us. Um, but they're all just fascinating and handmade. So much time went into making these. Um, measurement for this is six and a half by seven. Um, again, it's from 1966. All of them were dated uh, mid 60s. Um, I think they exchanged pot holders for what I could figure out about four years, uh, four or five years uh, time span that they exchanged pot holders. It was just fascinating. So um, I see Trendelin's in at 15. Thank you so much. So we're looking for 16 or more. Um, and it does have the little loop that you could hang in up there too. Okay. So we're looking for seven or 16 or more. I'm going to count it down. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. And this was the only Easter one besides the ducks that I have. I have some more kind of general spring ones. Gosh, these are so cute. And they're pretty much one of a kind. They, they, they really I'm are. I'm pretty sure they are, especially like an original pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. There's the bit end from Karen. Thank you so much. So I believe this is going to Trendelin. You got it. Thank you yep. so much. All right. Congratulations, Trendelin. All right. My next round is going to start at $14. And I have a professionally framed, I believe this might, this was a big thing in my area here, probably in the 80s and 90s. So what they did was it's professionally framed and I'll get the glare off. And I believe that this is a Victorian era postcard that is framed. I did not open it because like I said, it is professionally framed. Okay. To the point where they even have their original little shop on here. It says Lancaster on the back. They even put the little felt things not to hurt the wall. And then they actually do a description here of what the technique is. Okay. So this is a paper cut. So it's actually, three things in one. One, you're getting the Victorian kitty cat card, postcard with the shoe and the, gosh, the blue flowers. Forget I don't know. Nots. Are they the forget me nots? I think so. Okay. Filled with forget me nots. A little, little tiny quesos up there. I know queso may not I have. Very much, cute. Not as much white, but this was a technique of cutting paper and I'm going to pronounce it wrong, but it is a German style of paper cutting and it is uh, Schranchnid, that's the way I phonetically wrote it out, it's Schranchnid, and it is the form of cutting of the paper, which is what they did around here, which was a, it was, they did it all over, there, there's all sorts of different ways of doing it all over the world, but this is in the style that they would have done it in a German or Dutch style. It says back here, I want to make sure, yes, it is, it is the, the German name, uh, for the ancient craft of cutting paper, okay? So this would have been an ancient technique on how they cut the paper. So uh, for $14, you're getting the framed vintage, which I believe is probably antique. It is the uh, antique postcard of the kitty cat holding in its mouth the shoe filled with forget-me-nots. And then somebody made the border, hand cut all of that. So it is professionally framed and matted. It has a glass 
uh, the, the frame is glass and then it is gold and it is wood and it measures about nine by seven. So about nine by seven. Hi, Becky. How are you? So good to see you. Hopefully you guys are following her at Vintage Viking Treasures. Always a fun sale to watch, Becky. I lurk too. Uh, but I know we have some cat lovers in here and I thought this would make a great little uh, addition to your gallery wall. Let me just get in here close for a moment so you guys can see. Again, I do believe that this is a um, probably an antique Victorian era postcard. The measurements are right for a postcard. It looks right. I didn't want to destroy it and take it apart. And then this is the German technique of paper cutting as the border. So thank you, Noel. I see you're 14. The company that used to make these, I know, I think they were German immigrants. And they. I'm pretty sure that they hand cut all of that and then would take these vintage postcards and then frame them professionally in this gorgeous frame. And I think it just has a good look to it. Um, I don't think it looks very 80s. I don't think it looks, it just has a nice old kind of look to it. So if you guys are into like vintage and antiques, I just thought it would look great on your gallery wall. You can mix it in with your cruels. You can mix it in with anything on the wall. It's going to look really good. And again, it measures just about nine by seven. So we're going to go ahead and do a countdown on this. We're looking for 15 or more. So you're getting the framed piece professionally under glass, wooden frame, uh, the hand cut border, which they did a phenomenal job. You can see it is a thicker, thicker style uh, paper. And then you're going to get what I have to almost be certain is a Victorian era postcard. So Dawn, thank you. I see you're 15. We're looking for 16 or more. Let's count it down. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. You can actually see here where it's a nailed in frame. And then they puttied that so it's professionally done. It even has a nice hanger on the back. They even put those little bumpers on so it doesn't mess up your wall. And it's in really good condition. Didn't get nicked up or messed up. It's just a gorgeous piece. So thank you all for the bids. Thank you, Dawn, for your bid. Thank you for the bid end, Karen. Noelle had a just-in-case of 53 So that means, Noelle, it's yours for $16. Thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you so much, Noelle. Alrighty. Okay. Um, 18, Jason. Right. I, guess we'll, I guess we'll do this guy next. Right. Um, so I have a Lefton bunny planter. I have never come across this guy Not in that a while. Specific. They did do a few different variations of white bunnies. Um, but this guy, I think he's just pleasant to look at. Some of the other ones they did, their face sculpt makes them look a little angry. I think, um, but he's just a pleasant little bun bun. Um, and he is coming with an antique Easter postcard. I thought that they looked cute together. Um, and this one I had, I had another postcard from the series last week um, in my handmade sale. I paired it dusty, um, the one that you got that went with the little arrangement. This is another one from that same series um with the bunny and the little chicks this one does not have a postmark date on it but the other one was from um 1913 uh, was postmarked the other one that i got at the same time uh, but this one's not postmarked but i thought it looked cute inside that planter because it just kind of rests up against the bunny's ear um peeking out there so you're going to get the pair together so um i'll show you the planter there's no chips on him there's just a little bit of crazing um on him but he is a nice large planter um i really like the painting details on him he's definitely more of a realistic rather than um a kitschy bunny and then his little foot peeking out the back with his tail um there is a remnant of the left and foil sticker there it's just pretty much gone there on the bottom um, just a little bit of crazing on him. Again, not any chips. So he is that kind of um, satin finish. He's not meant to be that high glaze, but they did do high glaze on the eyes, um, which I like that. It kind of makes them look more realistic there. And then he's just got little blush pops of pink. So really cute. Of course, you could leave him out past Easter. Um, I did clean this on the inside. There is just a little, there's a little stain right there. I could not get that out. 
um, but otherwise he's in really, really nice shape. So you're going to get the postcard with it as well. So bunny planter measures seven and a half by four and a half and the um, early 1900s Easter postcard. So we're going to count it down. I see Mary Beth just popped in there with a 20. Thank you so much. So we're looking for 21 or more. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. And one of my life goals is to get to the Canton Antique Market as well. So I see you guys are talking about that in the chat. Always wanted to go there. All right, there is Karen's bunny bid end. So Kimri Ann put in a just in case over Mary Best 20. So Kimri Ann, this is coming to you for 21. Thank you so much. All right, guys, my next item does have some condition issues, okay? But she's old. She's from the 30s, and I've never, never been able to find one of these to offer for resale. I think it's maybe her condition issues, but I think I'm with some friends that we like the same thing. So I want to introduce you to Bobby May. She is a composition. She is a... Um, She's a sway and swing. Amy, have you ever seen one of these before? I have. I have seen one of those, but she was in really, really poor yeah. condition. So she is a little sway and swing. Now, she is made of composition, okay? So there is a little bit of splitting to her, all right? There's a little bit of splitting on this side, and there is a little bit of splitting over here on this side. So she's like a pulp wood composition. She's not a chalkware. She's almost like a burr wood is what they're made of, okay? And over the years, they start to split. So she also has just a little bit missing on the top of her head. But I've seen these where whole faces are missing, the whole dress is missing. And what she does is right here, now I will take her apart uh, as I do the countdown because it's hard to sit her back on the post I want to make sure I do it right because up here where her legs are, where her feet are, there's a wooden dowel that goes up in here, okay? And then there's two little wooden dowels that stick out and it fits up in between and that's what makes her little bob and dance, okay? So she will bob and dance. So she's actually, she's the precursor to the nodders, okay? So she is a bob and sway. She gets a little crazy, all right? I believe somebody at one time tried to glue her on permanently, so... There is a little bit of glue residue up on the inside, but she displays beautifully. And I really think with her age from the 1930s, I don't know that you're going to make her bob and sway all that much. She now basically becomes a figurine in essence. So she's a gorgeous piece. If you guys do some research, they made just a few couple different colors of these, but I always usually find the blue one. So she's just this cute little composition. She does have some issues, yes. She is split a little bit there, but I'm more than confident that she'll ship fine. It's not like she's falling apart. It's just, I think the, the age of it warps it a little bit because we're talking, we're almost near antique. So you have a little bit of splitting over here, but then again, she's this gorgeous composition. And then you got her little feety here in her shoes. Yes, you have a little cracking there, but she stayed together very well. And I also showed you up here on the top of her head. She is just missing a little bit where it did chip off. So she measures, come on, honey, you got to look good for your public. So hold it there. You're about 14, you're about 11 inches tall. She's about 11 inches tall and she's about eight inches wide. And she is from the 1930s. These were like little toys or little novelties that folks would have and use. And she's a little bob and sway. So I love the fact in her name, everywhere I found it's Bobby May, good old Bobby May here. This cute little 1930s composition girl, Bob and Sway. Um, again, just note some of the condition issues, but she is so darling and she is in very good condition for her age, okay? So thank you so much, William. I see you for 25. Now I'm gonna take her apart so nobody, nobody be scared, it's all right, but this is the dowel rod that fits up on the inside. So I think at one time somebody tried to maybe glue her, but you can see there's a little hole right here and then there's a little hole right there, okay? So she has these two little wooden dowel rods up in there on the inside. You can kind of see them sticking out right there. Near where they tried to glue some stuff, there's two little prongs that stick out and they fit right in there. So I'm going to ship her with this out and all you do is gingerly 
get that up in there, slide that in there, and then she sits beautifully, okay? I don't have it in there all the way, but if you ram that in there, you could you could break the wood. But it just takes a moment's extra time to set that in there, and then that's what helps her do her bob and sway, okay? And I believe that her head stays on permanently. Uh, maybe some of them do come off. If they did glue the head on, the, the head will remain on. And I will do what... Uh, bobblehead collectors call scarf it, which means I will scarf around the neck so the head will not move while it's shipped. Okay. So she's in good condition. She's in good uh, condition for her age and her patina. So, and she is complete. So let's count her down. Thank you so much, William, for your bit of 25. We're looking for 26 or more. I think you're going to a new home. Let's count it down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. These run the gamut, but I've never been able to find one reasonable enough to bring to a live sale. I saved her from the flea market. She was on some guy's table that had nothing but tools, and I was like, girl, I got to get you out of here. I can get you out of here and get you into a new you don't home. Need to spend your life with the hammers and the wrenches anymore. Yeah, she was like, "No, Amy, Jason saved me, and now I'm going to live with William." And thank you so much, William. Congratulations! You're going to enjoy her. She's really fun. All right, Amy. All right, eight dollars choice, Jason. All right. Okay. Um, I have a soft spot in my heart for these weird chenille critters. I have uh, two bunnies. I have two bunnies tonight. Um, I had the one, um, and then I found this one over the weekend. So I thought I would bring them both tonight. Um, they're so cute. So these are handmade, as far as I know. Um, they don't have any kind of indication that they were manufactured. Although I do know that there were some chenille things that were manufactured, but these guys, I believe, are both handmade. So let's look at both of them. Um, so the white one here. Um, has accents of pink, little flocked white millinery flowers, Google eyes, little nose, and a big giant carrot that she is taking a bite out of. And then she's got a little pink, a little pink tail poking out there on the back. So these are all built on little styrofoam balls. So that's the first one. And then the second one, um, equally as cute, I think, is the little gray bunny. Um, also has some flock millinery flowers, and um, I love how they made the little whiskers out of, um, these were like little stamen for millinery flowers. I love that, how they did the little whiskers. Pom-pom nose, um, little plastic eyes for this one, um, a little bow tie with a flower, and then also a big carrot. This one has just a white tail on the back. So measurements here, um, the white one is five and a half, and the gray one is six. So just kind of you know, one's just a little bit taller than the other one, but so cute. I don't know. Just kitchelitis. Yes, <laughs> it is. I, say. Yes, I love it these is. things. Um, I, I have them. a couple magnets on my fridge um, that are different shiny little animals like this, too. I so I see um, Trendlin's in at 15. Thank you so much. So we're looking for 16 or more on choice, and I'm going to count them down. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid and Trendolin, did you get your giant bunny? I hope you got your giant bunny. These are my favorite things at Easter time. I love these. Love these. I got to learn how to make these. I was just thinking the same thing. I was just thinking I, the same thing. I have thing. to figure out how to make these. There has to be a downloadable kit somewhere from back in the day. Well, I can, it's it's not probably not that difficult, but I would want to figure out different kind of critters to make too. All right, there's a bit of end. Um, all right, so Trendolin, you want both of them? You got it. Thank you so much. And she got the bunny. Thank she you, thank you. Bunny. All right, guys, I was channeling like you know, sitting in your garden here in a, in a few weeks. That's why I brought the Lue the Lue the Lou Ray cream cream and sugar. But I was also thinking, you know, folks are going to come over and dine with you. So I have choice on porcelain and each box only has two. And I believe they're new old stocks. So it's choice on these porcelain napkin rings. Okay. 
So they have their boxes, and your first choice is going to be this one. So they have their original box. They were 99 cents originally at a store called Two Guys, which I never went to, but I have heard of it. And there is one in the box. I took one out to show you. They're actually made in Japan, okay? And they are porcelain flower rings. So here you go. Here's your first one. It's this gorgeous lavender porcelain, and it's $12 choice. So you can pick one box of two or the other box of two. And again, it is first one is this lavender style flower. No chips, no cracks. I actually believe they've never been used. Um, and then it has its original fine china made in Japan. So these are probably from the 1960s, I would believe. And again, I thought these could also, these would be great because they are about the size of a candle ring. So I was thinking that not only could you use this for your Easter table, be very fancy, and you could use it for your, hello, Brad, how are you? You could use it for your napkin. Some folks like to set a table and never use it. I thought you might want to do that with these, or they would make great little napkin rings. They also sit flat, of course, because when the napkin's in, so you could use it for something else, okay? So that's your first choice. It is the little lavender ones. Again, they are new old stock. They are made of porcelain, and there are no chips to any of those flower tips, okay? Your second one is the yellow flower. This is more like, oh God, daffodil. This kind of reminds me of a daffodil uh, flower. Same exact company, same exact everything. And it's a set of two and they are made in Japan. And I believe that they are new old stock. And then here, this one is missing one of the, one of the uh, lips that holds it shut, but you'll get the original box little napkin rings. And again, I thought they would look great if you use them on the table as a napkin ring or if you use them as candle rings. How great would they look? And I do believe if you had the right size taper, it would fit on there really, really good. Or you guys could use these for some other kind of decor and some other ways to decorate with. So that was your second choice, your yellow flower, which I think Maybe daffodil, Amy. Do you think that's maybe a daffodil? I, that's hard to tell. You know, I'm not. I'm not the flower guard guy. And then, <laughs> then, then you have the little lavender one here with the yellow. Do you so. think a, an egg would balance on those? Like an alabaster egg or a glass egg or anything like that? Oh yes, you. I never thought about that. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. You could definitely. And I don't have one within arm's reach. Um, Oh, yeah, I do. I have one of these hobbyist eggs. Yes, I do. Hold on here. If you had the right-sized egg, you absolutely could balance an egg in there. Oh, my God, Amy, I never even thought about that. Yes, if you had just an egg a tick higher than that, these could sit, and you could go – I didn't even think – it. look at that. Now, this one is a little bit smaller. I bet if you had an alabaster egg, it would sit in or there. Or if you put tight. the point – well, I guess it's heavier oh. at the rounded end. Yeah, but. I guess you will. Yeah, the heavier. And I would say those alabaster eggs that I was selling, yes, you could balance one of those in there without a problem. So no, you're exactly right. I never thought about that. So it'll be choice and each box, truth be told, when I bought these, I thought they had four in each box, but they only have two in each box. So you're bidding on the set of the lavender ones or the yellow ones, and you can get both sets. So let's go ahead and do a countdown. Dawn is in at 12. Dawn, thank you so very much. And let's count it down. And when you win, you can let me know which ones you want. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. They are daffodils. Okay. Uh, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid. And this is another art form that just isn't done anymore. Nobody takes the time to get out the linen napkins or the time to get do we have the time? But it's just, to me, it's that extra. It's that extra. So there's our bid end. So Dawn, thank you so much. Let me know if you want the yellow or the purple. And if you just pick one, we'll bring the other ones back during the recap. But all you got to do is let me know if you want purple or yellow. Thank you so much. You got the purple ones. They're yours. Thank you so much. Patty Rose, I had to laugh at your comment you put in the chat a little while ago that you thought that the flowers down here were duck feet. <laughs> oh my god, they kind of do. I can see that now, and I might make some duck feet for next week. That would be fun. That'd be funny. All right, um, 45, Jason. Okay. So, my last handmade bunny doll, I'll take her off the stand. I just she's easier to store if I have her upright. 
Um, so this is the last one I have um, for the season. And she has bright pink um, ears and a fun yellow daisy with the rhinestone. And I, there is um, armature in the ears. So typically the dolls start at 40, but because there's a little extra work involved in adding the ears on here and the armature and all that, that's why it's starting a little higher. So hand-painted face. I love to do the eyelashes. It's my favorite part. Um, then she's got a vintage kind of pink pearly button here for her dress. And um, this dress is different than the two that I had last week um, in my handmade sale. Um, this one's got kind of a brightly colored egg print. And then she's got turquoise blue kind of gingham for the split in there that kind of pulls out that she actually has gingham eggs on the dress. So, um, so multicolored eggs and then yellow polka dot socks, bright pink shoes, and what bunny wouldn't be complete with a little ball tail on the back side. She's got the hook and loop there if you want to take the dress off, if you need to launder it for whatever reason. Um, usually before I send these out, they do get a little tattoo from me on their backside um, where I sign each one so that you know she's completely original. Um, but this is my last one that I will have so far. So I don't really know. I'm trying to think. I might do some like normal ones coming up next, but the next holiday ones won't be until Christmas in July. Yeah. <laughs> will be the next time that I probably will have some. Um, and otherwise then we'll, then we're waiting for Halloween. So the witches will come back, but I'm not seeing any interest in her. That's all right. We'll bring her back at the recap. If anybody wants to think about it, she'll come back for the recap. All right, I'll wait a second here for the lag. And thank you, Karen G., for being our official mod and bid ender. Kim, thank you so much for being our backups. If you guys get a chance, please throw those links in there. I'd greatly appreciate it. So I did pretty well with some of the, uh, I think it was some of the Mexican pottery, yet some of the Italian, and this kind of crossed over. So it is this gorgeous, this is Italian, it is Capodimonte, and the only condition issue on it is, and it's starting at $18, is one of the flower petals underneath, one of them has a little boober. So this one has a little tiny boober right there underneath, but it still displays well. And then I think there's a place where some of the glaze got missed, okay? But this is like a little trinket dish. It has like this lattice style effect to it. I thought this would be great if some of you folks use some of those deodorizers and things in your home you could put in there. You could definitely use this as a little jewelry box. You could use it. You could probably even pop a little tea light candle in there and it would flicker out through the sides of this. But this spoke very spring into summer for me. So it's actually signed Italian. So it is Italian pottery. And again, it has that Capodimonte kind of flair to it. Believe it or not, there's no damage. If there is, it's just a little nip or a little bit of paint where there is no damage to those flowers at all. And you don't often see these bundles of flowers where they mix in that kind of blue, those kind of yellows and pinks. And then they went a little heavier on the burgundy, which I just think it has a super unique color, you know. And this would be a great little uh, catch-all dish. It would just look great on your side table. And it just looks like this gorgeous basket of like flourishing flowers uh, for all year round. It would make a great Easter gift. It would make a great housewarming gift. Um, and again, it is probably 1960s era Italian pottery. Uh, the piece measures about three and a half inches tall by about five inches wide. So um, again, usually these flowers, when you find them, they're missing off a whole petal. But the airbrushing effect on this, I think, is just amazing. I think it's in just really, really good condition. Um, and it is just a little trinket dish. I believe you could still have rings in there and they're not going to fall through or anything. And one of the little flowers, one of these maybe little forget-me-nots, has just a little chip on the underside. Just a little chip right here on the underside. But then we have the yellow flower. Then we have that little maybe forget-me-not style flower. And then we have the gorgeous little pink budded rose. And it just boggles my mind that all these little applied pieces are in really, really good condition with no damage. And then it is signed Italy down there on the bottom. So again, I do believe it's from probably the 1960s. It's just a gorgeous example. I don't find Italian pottery or Capodimonte style that is like this, that it has the open lattice side 
Um, usually it's like a closed dish with no openings on the side. So thank you so much. Circle seven, I see you for 18. So we're looking for 19 or more. Again, there's no major issues to any of these flowers. It's anything. It's a pin tip. It's a pin tip of issues. And then the one blue flower does have just a little nip on the underside. One more time, the measurements on this are about three and a half inches tall. So it is a nice size, three and a half inches tall, and it is just about five inches wide. So let's go ahead and count this down for Laura. She's in at 18. We're looking for 19. Uh, we are doing just in case if you're an active bidder. So let's count it down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Oh, and Tina did find this. This was Tina's find the other week. I need to make sure that I Good job, Tina. say that. She was, she spotted this and it's just a really neat example. So there's the bid end. So thank you so much. Circle seven, it's yours. Congratulations. All right, Amy. You're very late to the party, sir. Oh, He's very so. late tonight. He must have been sleeping somewhere, napping. Um, eighteen dollars, Jason. All right. All right. So I had well, I had a kitchtastic plastic centerpiece last week, and I have another one. Oh, um, and this one is in a pink basket, and um, it has all the pieces I believe that it's supposed to have. I've seen these before, where pretty much all the flowers and little eggs and things are missing. Um, but in the center here is Mr. Sailor Duck. He's so cute. Um, he does have like, he's got his little collar on and then his little sailor hat and he's got tulips coming out of his butt, you know, like you, do. you, just, you don't question the kitsch. You just, nope. you just go with it. Um, and then there's all these little sprigs um, that go around the basket, little striped eggs and flowers, little tulips. Um, and then they kind of go around the basket. There's some other flowers and stems, tulips, daisies um and big tulips in the back um and then the past the basket is pink this one is not weighted like the one last week the bunny one had like a, a disc at the bottom that had yeah. some weight in it this one's super lightweight um to it and actually the handles can even come off um there's little you can pop these tabs out and even take the handle off of the basket um if you don't like the handle and you know that would just make it more of a spring piece not necessarily an easter basket Measurement for this is nine and a half by eight and a half. So that's the size there. This one is a hard one to find. I have to tell you why collect these and this one does not come around that often at all. Mm -hmm. And then there's another version of this where it's just mm -hmm. the duck head, yeah. um, like on a stick and then it's in like a flower pot. Yeah. You have a few of those. I think yes. I've gotten one of those for yes. you, right? Yep, you did. Yep. Yes, you did. Yeah. I love these. Just kitschy goodness. I uh, can't get much more. No. than these things. No. Um, I just don't run across these as often as I used to. Um, I used to find these quite frequently and I haven't found any in some years, um, except for the one that I picked up from Jason um, in the Chicago area last year because he didn't have it. But um, I'm not seeing any interest in him. That's okay. We'll bring, oh, oh I you see do. the Appleville Fields just popped in there. Sorry for the lag, you guys. All right, we're going to count this down. Um, again, it measures nine and a half by eight and a half. So, um, oh, you guys, I Late. see Liz yep. is also I in. Think All right. a Sorry the lag, you guys. I yeah. never know how bad it is. Hope you I, got, wanna, yep. I don't want to take too long on anything or drag it out or be here for five minutes trying to, right. you know what I mean? No, I know. Yeah. We, we tow that line. I know. Yeah. All right. So. Um, all right. You guys, sorry the lag was so bad tonight. All right. So um, I, I see Daffodil Fields finds this in at 20. MJ, I saw your 19 as well. So we're looking for, oh, MJ just popped yep. in with a 21. All right. So we're looking for 22. I'm going to count it down. And we have one more round after this, plus your guys' fantastic finds. Yep. All right. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Whack, whack, bed end. And this one's a good one. I mean, they're all good, but this one is a superb 
version of this. Love him. And he could stay out all year long. If you guys do like mermaids and ducks and mm -hmm. Navy and sailors. And all right. There's the bid end from Karen. Thank you so much. All right. So Laura had a just in case of 24, but Liz came in with a just in case of 26. So Liz is going to take it for 25. Congratulations, Liz. Thank you so much. All right, guys. It's been a while since I have found one of these composition banks in this good of condition. So this is just starting at $16 and it does have a little bit of glow to it. But it is this cute little girl, and she has like her pink little dress meow, on. Meow. She, and she has her cute meow meow, her little kitty cat in her arms. And she is just happy as can be. There might, no, there's none. But she has this gorgeous, very mod butterfly on the top of her little hat. And she has her two little flowers, no chips, no cracks. Um, again, this is that composition. The only thing I can say is I think the original price tag at one point was here on the back. So that isn't paint that's missing. That's residue that's on that. So if you wanted to try to clean that off, you could, but I would just let it be because I believe that the original price tag was right there. So she even has her original little holder. She has her little made in Japan sticker. And again, these are, this is that composition. So she is a nice tall bank. Again, you find these in the wild, they're all chipped up. You know, they, they don't look as new as this one does. She comes in at about seven inches tall and about four inches wide, and she does glow. So all of the pink, uh, there you go. You can kind of see that all the pink lace work down here glows. She also has a little bit of glow here on the pink on the side there. But that's about it. Nothing on the hat glows, and the coin slot here on the back doesn't have any chips or damage. I don't think she was ever used as a bank. I believe her original owner probably just used her as a figurine. So... Again, this is some 1960s kitsch at its finest. The light keeps catching this right here. There's no chip right here. But what I love is if you guys love butterflies and flowers, she has this cute little butterfly. You can see the little, there we go. If I cover it up, you can see like the little uh, antennas coming out for the tip of the butterfly. And then her face has no damage whatsoever. And she is, she's just this sweet little girl with her little, her little kitty cat. And he, he or she, is just as happy as can be. And I just think this is just such a cute little bank. You could pop this into an Easter decor. You could give it as a gift to a, a little individual or just use it yourself. I just, I, to me, again, this is my roots. This is what we started selling that we've always been into. And when I find this stuff, this is what I'm truly passionate about. The, the To me, this is, to me, this is kitsch. So it's not extreme kitsch. But it's still kitsch. That's what we have to do, Amy. We should do a show someday. Is it extreme kitsch? Is it just kitsch? Is it kitschy? Or is it kit like a gong show kind of thing where we judge the, how kitschy something is? So uh, peppermint pet. This would be your mild kitsch. This would be your entry level kitsch yeah, that will get you. I would agree with that. Get you heading into the kitschalitis. She's so like a four. She's like a level four. You're right. It, 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 this is what gets you started. So, and Ruthie B, how are you, Ruthie B, is in at 17. So let's do a countdown. We're looking for 18 or more. No condition issues to report except for where her original price tag was. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, to one bid end. How can you have a bad day when you see two little faces like that? That's going to put a smile on your face as you walk out the door to deal with the world. I, I agree, Laura. Those little kitty plaques that you had earlier yeah, look really cute with that. They, would, they came from the same estate. They came from all that stuff. All the cat stuff came from the same person. So all right, there's the bid end. So Peppermint Patty, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Gateway Kitsch, I agree. Yeah. She's coming your way. All right, Miss Amy. Thank you so much. Guys. All right. This is our last round, you guys. Um, $12, Jason. All right. So I have um, I have a bunny book lot. All right. So they're all bunny books, and there's three of them that you're going to get in the lot. And I'm going to talk about each one. Now, I will say right off the bat that uh, the bigger ones have some corner wear going on, um, which is kind of typical. All right. So I'm not going to go through all the books. I'm just going to show you a couple of my favorite little pages in here. So the first one, you're going to get all three. This is not choice. Okay. 
Um, I've got Home for a Bunny, and this one um, has been reprinted originally from 1956, but this is the 1984 printing, okay? Home for a Bunny. I remember this one was a favorite as a kid. Um, really cute illustrations in this one. Great little story that goes throughout this one if you've never seen this one before. Great to put into an Easter basket. Um, I always loved to get books in my Easter basket when I was a kid as well. So that's the first one. Um, the second one, probably my favorite of the bunch is Happy Rabbit. Yeah. The Happy Rabbit. Um, and the last two are big golden books. All right. And the other one's a golden book as well. All right. So the Happy Rabbit. This one is from 1968. Um, such cute. Oh my God. This one, this one is so darn cute. Um, look at the bright yep. springy graphics. Great yep. for a background on that one. Um, this one is also just a darling little story. It starts out in the winter um, or full spring as we're in right now, yep. I guess I can say. Um, just really darling, oh darling illustrations in this one. You guys know I like children's books. Um, this one, I mean, there's lots of possibilities yeah. in here. Look at the squirrel. God, Amy, that is fantastic. Um, show you one more, one more picture out of this one, and then we'll move on to the last one. It's good. The big old crow. All right, and then the last one is the animal ABCs. Now this isn't just bunnies, but there's there's some good bunnies in here. Really cute cover on this one. Now this one does have a little bit of writing. Um, on the inside, the Animal ABCs is from 1957. Um, cute, cute. So we've got a different animal, uh, but I really like this one right here. Specifically yes. for Easter, let us go find with all the little brain. Yeah. Holding sticks, I can't. Um, so then we get into the alphabet. Oh you know, God, look at that bear. Um, Oh my God. B for deer and C for cat, my two yeah. favorites right there yeah, next yeah. to each other. Yep. So cute. Um, this was this was another one of my very favorite um, books as a kid, too, going through, looking at all the cute little pictures. Yep, it's for all. Let me. Yes, it's for all of them. It's not for choice. Um, all the books together. So Animal ABCs, Happy Rabbit, and Home for a Bunny. They're all coming together. They're all golden books, um, all in relatively good shape. This one's 84, 1968, and 1957 on the ABCs. All right. So I see Rosie Clover's in at 12. Liz is also in at 13. So we're looking for 14 or more. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, seven six five four three two one bid end gosh there's graphics i know so good those are three fun books to use mm -hmm. and to read oh i didn't show you the back of this one Can you oh, that? mama bunny all right there's the bid end from karen thank you so much all right, so uh, a 15 from Laura, or just in case from Rose, Rosie Closer at 15, and then Liz had a just in case of 19. So Liz, the books are coming to you for $16. Thank you so much. All right, gang, my last item is gonna start at $10. And it's been a while since I brought some salt and pepper shakers, so I thought tonight's the night. So I believe maybe the basket is, I don't know, that wouldn't sound right. Maybe the basket is original. I don't know, but I think it's period correct. Okay. And these, you're going to get them for $10. So you're going to get the little basket. Okay. And they have like some just grass thrown in there. Cute little wicker basket, but you're going to get, they're made in Japan. They are sort of the same sculpt, but they are two different shakers. They're these little duckies. Look at the little duck feet busting out of their so egg. Cute. So I thought these are great for this time of the year. That's your two hole duck right there. Quack, quack has its original cork and its original Japan sticker on the bottom. And then here is your other little ducky who's busting on out. Look at the busting big Busting out. Like he, he's ready. He is ready to, to get quacking and get to doing stuff. Now, this is just the way everything's painted. So nothing's chipped. You know, they were quick to paint these. He is the little guy with three holes. And then, of course, this one has its Japan label and its original cork. So, Jason. Yes. 
What's a duck's favorite snack? Quackers. Cheese and quackers. Oh my gosh. Oh, well then I'm a duck because I love some cheese and quackers. Uh, so they what was the one that Ariana always says about the butt? What's the the, the it's butt quack. Butt quack. Yes, okay. So yeah, the butt quack. So if anyone's interested, they're these cute little kitschy little duckies that are made of ceramic. They measure just about two and a half inches tall by about two inches wide. So, and again, they are going to come with this little basket because that's how I found them. They do fit in there very snug. I don't know if, I do know back in the day they would sell shakers with the little baskets and then have them covered in like a cellophane. So you're going to get both of them with the little basket. If you don't want the basket, you know, like the whole Howard ones use the same kind of basket. So yeah. it, it feels period correct. I feel like you lose some of the detail of them, but you know, if they were in the nest and, you know, coming out of the egg, that's what they're kind of depicting. So Rose, I see you in a 10. We're looking for 11 or more. And I just want to show you guys one quick thing. They did do some details here to mimic like the cracking of the egg open and things. So all right, let's count them down. We're looking for 11 or more, and you get the set of shakers. So 10, I mean 20, 11. What am I counting? 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. Yes, kitsch. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one bid end. I'm not even holding them in screen. I'm going to lose my job here. I'm, 20, I am not. 2011. <laughs> I could be a politician doing math like that. You know what I mean? Oh my God. So there's the bid end. Thank you, Karen G. <laughs> Rose, congratulations. They are yours for $10. And we did it, Miss Amy. And let's get us both back up here. Mason, do you have anything to recap? I do. Okay. I do. I do. All right, so we're going to move into the recap. So we'll bring back anything that didn't sell during the sale. In case you guys weren't here, we'll bring it back a second time in case you were thinking about anything. Um, so these will be straight claims. These will be quick claims. Um, so if you want to claim anything, please type in the item plus the price so that we know what you're talking about. Um, and we will just give it a moment because the lag is so terrible. Um, in case there's more than one person that comes in trying to claim anything, um, we will do a little countdown to break any ties. Okay. So quick claims. Do you want me to just go? Yep. Let me okay. Get you over here, Miss so the, the only thing that I had was my um, bunny girl doll for 45. If you want to claim her, you can just put bunny 45. And that was all I had. Thank you all so right. much. So we used the Kim's recap for you. We'll use Karen's recap for me. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I had, I was thinking, you know, your upcoming uh tease outside how bougie would you be if you had your pastel lou ray cream and sugar they were 14 dollars. they're in very good condition yes i know they're different colors but that was what they did for this kind of uh, ceramics they would mix and match and usually they ended up going with the blue kind of periwinkle blue and then they went with the pink so uh, 14 you could just put cream and sugar they are 1950s goodness at its best no chips, no cracks. And then, so they were 14. So that would be 14 cream and sugar. And then I had one of my napkin rings, also like Amy's idea of holding an egg with it. The napkin rings, the set of two, they were $12. All right, circle seven, I got you for the cream and sugar, Laura. Thank you so much. So then I had this set and there's only two. I thought there would have been four, but they only sold them in sets of two, it looks like. So... Um, this is your little daffodil and it is made in Japan. Very great, great idea to use as a little riser. They would fit on a larger taper candle, or you just use them as the napkin rings as they intended them to. So very good condition, no chips, no cracks. That would be, you could just put ring and they were $12 ring $12 and it is yellow, but my light is washing it out. So ring twelve dollars and we'll get us both back up here just let me write circle seven down for the creamer set thank you so much you're going to enjoy that and we did it Miss Amy. again so much for hanging out with us tonight um if you haven't done so please make sure and email us your information um if you haven't done that yet or it's been a while do make sure to email us 
so we can get you your goodies when we do our packing and shipping. And now we're going to be moving into you guys' fantastic finds. So, um, Jason, you want to pop the email up there? You got it. So I do see. know that we would love to see your Easter displays um, or your spring displays, what you're doing with all the awesome stuff that you're getting from the sales or when you're out shopping um, or gifts maybe that you have gotten. We would love to see that. So please make sure and email us. Um, even include a, a brief description of the pictures that you send in um, just so that it's easier for us to talk about um, here on the screen. So share my finds live at gmail.com. If you guys want to share anything with us, we would love to see it, even if it's just one picture. Um, no pictures are too many or too little. So we want to see it, you guys. All right. Thank you guys so much. All right. We well, before we get into that, I just want to also say thank you so much, Karen G, for being our official mod and bid ender. And thank you so much, Kim, for being the backup. Thank and now you. we'll move in. And boy, do we got some pictures. So Amy, we'll show first of all is Kimry Ann. Okay, it's Kimberly, but it's Kimry yeah. Ann here in the chat. And then we'll show Sally B. So gang, if you're sitting down, put your seatbelt on, tighten your shoes a little tighter because you wait till you see some of these pictures. Okay. So here's the first one from Kim Rianne. Oh my word. <laughs> I, I just snorted because I can't. I like I can't. Just drink this up. Just drink this up. I can tell you while we look into this that Kim Rianne started collecting vintage glass about two years ago. Wow. Um, it, it seems that somebody had put out a milk glass swung vase on the side of the road for free. And that's what got all this started. I have to believe hey, free is good. It is. That would start me collecting vase. too. Especially a swung vase. And as we get into the next few pictures, I am assuming one of them is going to be the swung vase. Okay. Her favorite kind of glass is Viking. She also, and as we get into the pictures, I will bring it up again, but she also found an owl fairy lamp. She found it in two separate pieces at an antique store for $25. And in one of these photos, we're going to see a epic Viking mushroom. Oh, God bless you. I got to shop with you. She got it for $10. Okay. Wow. So here's a second picture. Oh, my. I'm assuming that's the fairy lamp that she's talking about. So it's persimmon Viking, yeah. which is very good. Very good. Kim and Rianne, the Viking got... owl um, ashtray, which you don't see yep. very often either. Nope. This is this is good. This wow. Is good. Yeah. Yep. And then you have the Vaseline glass mixed in there with some of the um, topaz. I love all the glass candy, too. That's so I fun. Too. I do, too. I mean, and Fenton calls some of that yellow topaz. Here you go. Some more guys. Look at that. I mean, it's good. <laughs> Kim Rianne, this is this is incredible. It's I'm, a really I'm, good mixture of like antique glass and mid-century mm -hmm. glass and the Blanco and Fenton and Viking and all the things. It's yep. such a good mixture. And those bottles with faces on, I'm drawing a blank. I know exactly where they're. I know that they were a um, like they they're were Blanco, Swedish. aren't they? No, they're not Blanco. They were made by a Swedish company and he was an artist and I'm drawing a blank of his name. And then it was like a, uh, like Neiman Marcus that Neiman Marcus. Oh God. It was Neiman Marcus had them and sold them with soaps. In Hoagland. That. Yes. Hoagland. Yes. Yes. I couldn't yes, yes. it either. It was like on the tip of my tongue. Yes. And then here is some of the milk glass. God, I hope it was at oh, center I one. I love the milk glass too. Yes. Okay. And then in Costa Boda. Yes. Thank you, Kim Rian. Yes. Costa Boda was the glass company that he worked for. He was an artist that worked for them. Kim Rian, are you able to tell us which one of these milk glass vases are the one that you got for free? I hope it's the one in the center. I, I'm hoping. You thought it was, I thought you said it was a, a Viking one. No, no. She Her favorite kind of glass is Viking. Oh, oh, it was the big, the big milk glass, the Fenton. Yeah, she ended up, it was the big one. Oh, my God. Wow. Kim awesome. Ann, that, Kim, that, my, that just doesn't happen. Like, that's, wow. Okay, that was the, that was the picking gods. And look at oh my this. Gosh, there's more. <laughs> look at this display. Oh, look at the Jack and Sally. This that is good. Is amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah. Great displays. Kim Rianne, this is incredible. Here, we'll go backwards again so you guys can enjoy everything from her milk glass display. I love how she added in those glass grapes. And then she has the, the white porcelain cat in there. Wow. And that's a pretty, those are pretty, look at that swan, Amy. Isn't that swan incredible? It's beautiful. 
Yeah. And then we have some of the persimmon and topaz colors. But this one. I I love the color combinations of greens and teals and blues and the little frogs that yeah. are mixed in there and the snails. I love it. Yeah, that's good. Kim Ann, thank you so much for sharing your collection with us. And we can't wait to see how it grows and changes. So please, guys, keep us updated as you change out your collections or you add new things, please, please send us some of the info. So, okay, guys. So now we're going to see some of Sally B's things that she found, and then we're going to see some of her creations. So um, let's do the first one here, okay? So Ooh, she, found, too. she found that whole glass lot, that whole, Amy, that whole lot. She got it on Marketplace for $200. I $200. mean, that alone for that epic drink giant viking in the middle that's pretty darn good but for all the other bonuses and that's, that's amazing. and that's coming in at 33 inches tall she says 33 Whoa. inches tall plus i love those two fingers it's like they're giving a peace sign there at the top yeah those lamps 15 bucks she got those lamps for 15 bucks y'all are killing me y'all are killing me here like yeah wow yeah 15 bucks and that those lamps right they now look like, like the original shades are on them too they do. Those lamps right now, they're bringing a premium. They're really in right now. It's like that Hollywood Regency kind yeah. of style. They're really in. So now, guys, hold on to your girdle, Myrtle, because we're going to get to see some of Sally's handmaids. OK, so here we go. Here are some. Oh, we got we got some Valentine handmade sneak peeks. Yes. Oh, look at all the little bunnies shoved in the wreath. Yeah. Yeah. This oh, is good. Cute. This is good. This is good. Sally, if you're still here, please put in your Instagram name. That way, if folks want to try to purchase any of these things, maybe they can get a hold of you. She so. was here earlier. I think she I was. I knew she was here, but. And then here are some of her reads. Oh, wow. Look at that Aren't big, they... giant flocked bunny. Yeah, I know. So... I got to tell you, out of any of the things that they're bringing back, I am a fan of those flocked bunnies. I yes. have, I bought some last year myself and, um, yeah, I think they're fantastic. And the way people embellish them, I think that they're just, I think they're really neat. I think they're really neat. So great job, Sally. Really good job. And I'll just show one more again. Those are her, some of her other displays. You did a great job. Oh, I didn't even notice the big bunny ears coming out of the top of the one wreath. Yeah. Yeah. It's That's good. cute. It's good. I well, love guys, it. Thank you so much for enjoying the fantastic finds with us. So, um, Amy told you again, please email us. We'll get it into queue. Hang tight guys, because we have some epic photos coming up from mama Pam. We have them in the queue. Uh, they will be coming up in the next week or two here. And if you guys have anything that is Easter, please get it to us sooner than later so that we can show it here in the next couple of weeks. I mean, we'll show Christmas Easter, but we'll show the holiday stuff all year round. But if you guys have anything done up right now and you'd like to share it, please do so. Uh, before we tell you where we're going to be at again, again, I want to thank Karen G so much. Please, if you could put in Gavin's link to his channel. Kim, thank you so very much for being our backup mod and bid ender. Please put in your links to Vamp, eBay, anywhere else that they can find you. Um, please make sure you subscribe to Amy's channel. Hit the notification bell. You'll know why in a couple moments. And again, um, Amy, tell the folks where you're going to be at next so yes tomorrow night if you guys weren't here at the beginning um 8 p.m eastern over on my channel um laura and mary beth the fatberg finds are joining me for a sale tomorrow night um i have no idea what those ladies are bringing to sell but i know that they have they have excellent taste in vintage and antique so yeah. um it'll be good it'll definitely be good tomorrow night um 8 p.m eastern and then a reminder i'm going to be doing invoicing on friday but um, I really want to ship everything out Saturday morning. My post office is only open from 10 to noon. I have a short window of time to get stuff shipped out. Um, but I want to get the Easter goodies on their way to you since Easter, you know, is creeping up very soon, very, very soon. Um, so, yes, I'm going to try really hard and get stuff out as early as possible Friday. I will always email you guys so you're not wondering if it's sent or not. I will email you when it's sent out, but I really want to try and get everything shipped out Saturday morning. So thank you guys so much. Hope you can join me tomorrow night. I know that's where I'll be at 8 p.m. Eastern over on Amy's channel. So guys, I'll be back Monday night for Marvelous Mother Tucker's Monday for the one and the only 
world renowned garden guy Bill and myself will be bringing some vintage for you guys. Then I'll be back with Amy for Fantastic Finds next Wednesday. And then on Good Friday, the Valentinos. <sighs> Y'all, this one's going to be good. This one is something that has never been done before. On a live sale uh, on Good Friday. So <laughs> wait to see some of the promos drop. I'm excited. I think this is going to be a I really thought you were gonna say. I thought you were going to say it. No, no, I'm I'm just gonna wait a little bit longer. I'm just gonna wait a little bit longer. I think maybe me and Bill will talk about it on Monday. I think we'll talk about it on okay. Monday. But right. guys, go get your ham. And I want to make sure I pronounce it right. Go get your ham early. Go do your things and then get ready to settle in on Good Friday with us because we're gonna we're gonna set the tone for your Easter weekend. Let me tell you, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. So guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And Amy, you don't know how much this means to us. We have worked so hard. We're coming up on our year anniversary, and we're going to be doing something special for that. Those details will be coming up here in the short future. Um, you just don't know how much this sale means to the both of us. So again, thank you for your continued support. Um, thank you so much. Please, guys, as we say goodnight to you, please just be kind to one another. That world is so nasty and ugly out there. Come in here with us. Have some fun. Forget your woes. Let's have some laughs. Look at some vintage. And then when you leave us, just please do some random acts of kindness and just make this a kinder world. So, um, again, me and Amy appreciate you so much. And until tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern on Amy's channel, have a good one, guys. We'll see you later. Bye. Thank you guys so much. Have a good rest of your week. Too. Good Bye -bye. night, guys.